boy, you guys are having fun in the chat already, aren't you? Nice to nice to have you with me and uh, the many guests that we're going to have this evening. So uh, it's going to be a long night. It definitely is going to hit midnight, I believe, by the time the show is over. But that's all right. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, and it's going to be a fun show. I see Jason's. Uh, you know, he's he's walking around strutting because he uh, he's got mentioned twice. Well, sort of in the. Uh, the email that went out today. Congrats on that, Jason. But, uh, but yeah, we have a lot of stuff to go over today. But before we get started, I wanted to mention the passing of Trina Robbins. I personally never got the uh, opportunity to meet her. Many, many fellow collectors that uh, that I know did. And, uh, you know, I actually was watching a couple of interviews that were done with her in the last year. So uh, she was pretty spry up until the, uh, you know, until she passed yesterday. But uh, she uh, you know, will be very well remembered in the hobby. I mean, she was a trailblazer in... Uh, uh, in the underground comic scene in the uh, in the late 60s into the early 70s. She did work with Dennis Kitchen, whom we recently had on with uh, Kitchen Sink Press, uh, you know, which was one of the uh, writers of uh, A Century of Women in Comics and, and many other things. Uh, uh, our condolences go out to uh, Steve Lealoa, her family, friends, and uh, fans uh, of her work and her career in comics. That's certainly someone who... Uh, who will be dearly missed by many. And, uh, you know, as uh, someone who was on the West Coast for a very long time, I know many of my West Coast friends had the opportunity to meet with her and, and talk with her many times. And I do uh, I do regret the I never had that opportunity. So, uh, you know, another loss, but, uh, you know, but uh, life goes on. We've got, uh, we've got uh, many things to review tonight. So we're going to start off with Mr. Layton and Mr. Joey. Uh, from Dyson Comics, and we have uh, we have a quick video from them, and they had a little bit of uh, drink and draw action going on this past week, and also um, yeah, they went out dining a little bit, and it, it was filmed in a TikTok fashion, but it's still all right. Let's take a look. We're we're having this. this and what is this, Simone? Uh, this is. Oh, she's giving me <laughs> <laughs> this is homo. It's uh, fermented fish, and it smells like cat piss. Yes, and it's got snails in it, right? Oh yeah, this, this one's got snails. And this here's a snail. Let's let's do this. Mm -hmm. Snail looking fish thing. Well, I don't even know. Us. Shellfish. That's all. All I could say is shellfish. That is snaily, snaily goodness. Yep. All right, let me try some, uh... Catfish fish. Mm. That, boy, you're right. It's kind of like the lid of a toilet seat at a concert. Right? <laughs> Tastes like this. Oh, I did. Don't ask me how I know that. You swear you know. Right, you're, you, just, you just TikTok me, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Kids. That's how we do it. Okay. Okay. Hey guys, it's another adventure at Drink and Draw. I'm here with uh, our Drink and Draw president, MPO. Hello. And tell the guys back in the States what we're doing tonight. Okay, uh, so we're going to draw a poster uh, of a uh, favorite character. If they, I, I don't know. Campaign poster. Oh yeah, campaign poster. Yeah. yeah, we're doing campaign posters for characters because Yesterday was yes. election day, yeah. right here in Korea. Korea. Yeah. By the way, who did we elect? I said it was a uh, uh, douche for the turd sandwich, right? right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, for those those uh, South Park fans out there. So uh, we have a few new people here, and and, uh, and uh, so we're, uh, of course he's finishing off last week's drawing. <laughs> Sorry about the video last week. For some reason, I went into slow motion, so most of our best stuff is really Our Oh, making fun of Simone uh, just kind of went by by. Simone, you want to get on camera real quick and say hi to America? Okay. She just woke up because, believe it or not, she's been here asleep for the last hour. All right. Come here. I want them to see this. All right. Here is sleepy Simone. You recognize the eyeball. <laughs> yes. Okay. But you saw I had dinner with your family. On, yeah. Uh, uh, on Sunday, and I, I was telling them about the fish that, that makes your mouth go numb. Oh yeah, yeah. it smells like cat piss. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. All right, Mr. President, on with the show, right? All right, we'll talk to you guys later. So, how are we doing with the campaign posters there, Bill? <laughs> you, you determined. 
Yes, because he, he was finishing last week's drawing when we started tonight, right? Uh, that is uh, that is his way. Bimo's already done one already, didn't you? Look at this. I absolutely love that. <laughs> yeah, especially if you knew how nasty water fountains are in Korea. That <laughs> you get the joke even better. <laughs> And John, I, I don't know if I want to give away the surprise. What you're going to do? Because it's always, it's always pretty much fun. So don't tell, don't okay. tell us yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, that Envy, that's great, man. I don't think he's going to win though. <laughs> Copycat. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's right. I forgot. Loki ran for office as one of the versions. That's great. That's absolutely fantastic. Eat, eat faster. We only have an hour or so left. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Miss David over here. All right. Okay. I'm all for that. Why not? <laughs> you only need one, David. You only need one. Hey guys, hey, welcome back. Hey, I have to answer Jason right now. Why would somebody eat something that smells like cat piss? It's yes. because the the show. <laughs> because you know, because you're an entertainer. I don't where in the world is Bob? You really Bob. like cats. <laughs> the whole point is for me, for me to go out and do unusual things, you know, in order to keep these guys entertained. What I didn't mention in the thing is it the fish gives off a chemical when you put it when you eat it that acts like lanocaine like the you know dentist uses to <laughs> numb your 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 mouth mm -hmm. so your mouth starts to go numb after you've eaten a little bit of it it's like so you had the numb tongue you know it's, why would anybody I, want I to eat that <laughs> hey i don't know i ate it to entertain the, your audience I, would i order it myself hell no you know but uh again the this is showbiz, right? You, you guys, you want me to yeah. stop? Eating? You know, I mean, I don't think so. Uh, it's like that's what that's what I do. So yeah, it actually numbs your mouth as you're eating it. it it's so bizarre. Um, wow. and again, bizarre foods. This is kind of our bizarre food segment, right, of the of the show. So there you go. All right. Well, uh, if I'm ever in Seoul, don't uh, don't treat me to that meal. All right. Uh, no, I sent Jim Lee pictures of me eating the raw octopus a couple weeks ago, and he just like went totally green. You know, he was not. He's like, oh, I said, look, when you come back here in August, this this is what you're getting. You know, and he kind of freaked out a little bit. Yeah, that place is right uh, next door to the show. Yeah, and it's yeah, really so, busy. It's really. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that was I was uh, having uh, lunch with Simone's uh, mom and her sister. Uh, sister's getting married on Sunday, and I will be there at the wedding. And I'm, we're going to film a, a real Korean wedding for next week's show. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Bob, did you know Trina? I have to ask. I did know Trina. Yes, we're, and Steve Leoloa. In fact, I just got done chatting with uh, Steve Leoloa on uh, Messenger, and uh, he seems to be doing fine, all things considered. Uh, I mean, as fine as you can get. She was fantastic and highly entertaining she was she was uh, definitely one of a kind and again she's a pioneer in the business having broken the glass ceiling for so many women um i'm, I'm sick of doing these 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 epitaphs though for people you know it's like you know i can tell my my everybody come please stay on earth okay we love you stay here <laughs> you know and, but uh, Trina was absolutely a, a wonderful, wonderful woman and uh, a great innovator and, and creator and sorely missed. And my, my heart goes out to Steve. But I Yeah, they were that. together almost 50 years. I mean, yeah, crazy. Close to that. You know, it's like I can't, you know, 50 minutes is about the longest I can retain the relationship of any kind. Of so uh, it's, uh, there you go. But uh, I know our time is short tonight. Yes. We had a really great uh, Dice uh, in Comics Cafe, Drink and Draw. Uh, Mr. Croder, uh, our theme last night was 
because it was an election, and you would love this, Bill, because the elections here are mm-hmm. quiet. And they're over, and it's a national holiday. Everyone gets a day off, and they go vote, and then that's it. You, I, you, you don't see tons of campaign ads. You don't see yeah. all this kind of stuff. America could take a lesson from that, you know? Was the comic yeah, shop open? A few weeks before the, the election. Uh, it does get noisy with uh, – there's these trucks that drive around with big screens and speakers and crowds of people, and they have songs. And My old shop was next to an intersection that was really popular for that, and it was it was so loud. That I, people there's just nothing leave. here in this this district, yeah. though. Yeah, there there was like uh, over on some of the major intersections that are really busy, but not around where we're at, like where mm-hmm. you live or where the, the shop is. But it, it 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 can get. I think it was a little less noisy this year than other times, though. Yeah, well, but it's only like it's only like two weeks that you're hearing about. Yeah, it's supposed to two <laughs> years of campaigning, right? You know. Yeah. Uh, I think and, they need and, to make some rules. Nobody so, talks about so. politics. It's kind of a verboten subject. Everybody mm-hmm. keeps it to themselves, you know. So uh, there's there's not any of that sort of uh, partisan like divide kind of thing going on. Um, so that's that's what I've learned. Koreans have very nice, quiet elections for the most part. <laughs> Did you work that day? It's still fun. We're still talking about yeah. the freaking fish over here, you know? <laughs> it's like, like, can't get over it. The fish. I don't need to have to smell like a litter box. You guys, all right? <laughs> I hate that shit for you guys, all right? It's- okay. Uh, we're done with that. We're moving on to something else next week, okay? <laughs> yes, uh, you were telling me in the green room that uh, you guys have been, uh, you've gotten your formal invite to the Japan Comic Art Expo. That Yoshi mm-hmm. helps uh, run, right? When is that? That well, wait a minute. I know when that is. It's the same weekend as Comic Card Live. It's May 11th and 12th. Sorry. Yep. So, yep. I'm. I, I know it because Yoshi told me that uh, this morning. So. Well, what started as an innocent trip, uh, me leaving the country because of my visa expires and I have to leave every 90 days, right? It started as that. Now it's turned into Joey and Cleo and I and, and, and are taking the merch and everything. We're going there and we got tables and it's a big old deal, you know. And, uh, um, you know, I originally was just going to see my buddy Tack for a couple of days and now it's turned into an event. So there you go. We guys get off of the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Nikki. I promise not to talk about anything this week, okay? Uh, about you know what, okay? I promised Spencer that I wouldn't say a word. All right, so, uh, so Joey, uh, mm. last night's theme. So last night's theme, since it was election week, we did kind of campaign posters. So uh, they they drew up uh, different types of uh, campaign related things. So you saw some of the stuff in the video. Mm-hmm. But I've got the completed well, ones here. Yeah, I, I did the, uh, uh, because I had drawn Peter Cushing so many times uh, uh, in an Iron Man as uh, Justin Hammer, it's like I can pretty much do him from memory. So I did Grand Moff Tarkin for Governor. <laughs> uh, That's perfect. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. The, uh, the I Star have, Wars I fans in the crowd were, were pretty crazy about it. Love you, Nikki. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> See, I can't uh, keep my mouth. All right, got Joey, any other ones there, Joey? I thought there was uh, yeah. that one with yeah. the, uh, what was it, Peter Parker or somebody with the with the water Oh, yeah. I well, there's the, uh, the water one. Yeah, that's, that, hmm. that's BMO. BMO is great. You know, water <laughs> fountains are not a popular thing in Korea because of uh, COVID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you probably well, that was a nice That was prime campaign poster for... <laughs> For for uh, student elections, that was a, that was a great have... spot for it. Yeah, I, I ran for student body president, and I put the uh, my, my slogan was "Vote for Joey Croner. He could save your class." And then I made the C and the L really small. It was really funny when I was when I was seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah she did another one too. That was uh, yeah, that it was, uh, looks like Justin Hammer. Because Steve, because that's who I patterned Justin Hammer after. I, I, it's like, it's, uh, I, I did him after as Peter Cushing. That was, mm-hmm. uh, it's quite deliberate. Steve knows. Yeah. Anyway, go on, Joey. I'm sorry. All right. Then we've got uh, one of my friends that uh, stopped in. He did this one. Sean's right. Yeah. Uh, the Toriyama one. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, we've 
got. Let me see if I can get uh, that. And then the other Star Wars one was. Yeah, that's why I said copycat. Mm. <laughs> And this one, he worked really hard. He put a lot of work into that. This yeah, is, this short is time he can bring that out. Yeah, so it's pretty good. And then uh, one of our favorites. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, Imko's friend. Yeah, who we can't ever remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> very good, uh, Imko's friend. <laughs> yeah, because very, very talk good pose for Mr. Fisk. I'm sure everyone's going to vote for him. I mean, he's a ringer art as an artist, but he's just like Anthony like Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this this one made me think like, oh, who the hell are you? Oh, I'm the Quizats Hatterack. I didn't vote for you. <laughs> you don't vote for the Quizats Hatterack, though. But, no, you yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, then how did you become Quizats Hatterack? <laughs> I need to design a thanks, Steve. I need to design a villa. It looks like Bill. <laughs> I'll buy that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, it'll go on the back wall. Yeah. Someone did a, this is the last one. Someone did a Richard Nixon one. As Magneto. I'm not a super villain. But yeah, it was a lot of uh a lot of really good stuff. I, I kept I kept a couple out that weren't that weren't in the theme of the thing, so but were also yeah. So nice. I, I didn't get a chance to do a lot of commissions. I only did two this week mm -hmm. because uh, Joey had me slaving over uh uh that yeah, that this is one of my all-time favorite Avengers uh, Kirby covers, and I, I, I've always wanted to do a recreation of it, you know. And uh, I, I played with the coloring a little bit; it's a, it's 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 a bit different, uh, but uh, I, I love this cover, and so I always wanted to take a shot at doing a recreation of that. So yeah, Spence will have that with him, um, and this was an actual commission from a guy in England. He wanted me to recreate the uh, splash page to. Uh, uh, Iron Man 128. So uh, that was a that was a, a, what I would call a lot of work. But uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, and not having the zip, I had to kind of do the muted things with color because uh, mm -hmm. originally he was in in a pattern zip a tone or whatever. So um, yeah, so that's all I had time for because of of what Joey because of our uh, our, our next store exclusive cover. It's a wraparound, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be big. It's gonna uh, people are really gonna like it. Yeah, we so even though there's not a lot of conditions just, this week, but it, with this one coming, we're out, just waiting for approval uh, from uh, the licensor uh, or whatever for you know. But that, this mm -hmm. the research all that stuff because I'm not really familiar with the characters. It, it took me a while to get all that stuff together and put the, and then do it as a kind of, uh, you know, in a wraparound design. We're, we're doing a kind of a takeoff on the uh, handbook to the Marvel universe mm -hmm. with all the characters like kind of going yeah. from uh, left yeah, to right. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're just waiting. I will show it to you as soon as we get it approved. <laughs> do you have a but deadline the, when it needs to be printed and in the shop? It's uh, the, the, the drop deadline is uh, May 24th, I think. So it's a, uh, but it takes a little time with the licensor. The, the, everything needs to be approved step by step for that one. So uh, unfortunately, we won't have it for uh, a free comic book uh, day or for the con in Tokyo. But uh, yeah. it'll be uh, definitely uh, uh, something that we'll have uh, by the time we get around to uh, our show here in uh, Seoul. You know? and what about the did you and Jiggy? Or Ziggy, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 no, it's Jiggy. You, you Jiggy with it. Okay. Uh, so uh, I don't know if Jiggy's on yet. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're working out the details now. But Joey and I are definitely going to be there in Manila. All right? So cool. it's just a matter. We're letting Spencer kind of take over the, the, the nuts and bolts of the whole thing. But uh, So we'll be there in September. And uh, hopefully I get to see Mike Zek and everything like that and check out Manila for the first time. So it'll be pretty cool. Right. We need another uh, WTF from you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Even, yeah, uh, even when you go to the Japan Comic Expo, Alder. I expect one. Oh, oh yeah. No, you're going to get it. You know, if there's anybody there that I know, I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, upset the, the these people by insulting their, their, <laughs> their creators on camera. Uh, Americans can handle it a little better, I think, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. Uh, it's like, hi, I'm Bob Lake. You know, I, I don't want to really do any of that to them because they're, you know, 
they have a different mentality there, but we'll we'll be fine. We'll be fine. So yeah, that's so. What's on the show today? Uh, we've got a uh, a unique heritage auction recap that we're going to be doing. I've got uh, Jiggy is going to be coming on after, oh, cool. after ten tonight. We're going to be kind of uh, announcing some stuff for the mystery sketch going on with Comic Art Live. Yeah, Casper hit me up about that. Yeah, so he, how, hard, how hard did he hit you up? Pretty hard. Yeah, it's a form letter. Bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was so touched by his form letter. Dear uh, comics professional. Yes. Who I've known for half of my life. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it, I, I, it brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, you know, yes, yeah, so we have that going on. And then I've got a couple videos I've got to play. I've got, uh, um, uh, I've got a guest coming on who's doing the uh, weekly pick with me. That's not my usual guest. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a busy, busy night, show. <laughs> busy show. Yeah. But it's all good, Bob. So, okay. um, yeah, well, well we, we're going to let you go because you told me not to be so chatty today. <laughs> I did not say that. Those are not my words. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, get on with the show, Bill. Yes, on with the and, show. Uh, yes. we'll, we'll, and we'll, next week, we'll show you the big, fat Korean wedding. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Um, do they eat anything special or drink anything special at a I Korean have no wedding? I idea. Joey. All the weddings are different, so there's a... I don't know what type of wedding they're doing because a lot of the weddings they're 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 kind of a they're kind of a, a show. So I think they try to make it entertaining. I, I think it's going to be a secular one. I don't think it's going to be. A oh, Korean. is it? Yeah. Okay. We're stifling you tonight, Tom. Uh, listen, Tom. <laughs> Tom can handle it. He's he's got broad shoulders, man. What can I tell you? Anyway, All right. listen. Good luck with the show. We'll see you Thank next you very week. Much. You guys have a, an awesome day and a wonderful week, and I'm looking forward to whatever you guys uh, send us for next week. And Joey, thanks thanks for the hummus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joey found me hummus at Costco. Oh, and I've been getting people contacting me about buying some of the, the stuff from Drink and Draw. I've been getting back to everyone. Uh, okay. If anyone else is interested in stuff, yep, it's we'll info email at DysonComics.com. Say it again. Inf was it Info? Info. At DysonComics.com. And it's and, A-N-D. At, yeah, Dice sorry. And comics. And dot remember, app. it's 100% of it goes to Korean charities. All right, gentlemen. Have a, have a great day. We'll see you again next week. All right. You have a good show, Bill. Thank you. All right. Always fun to hang out with those guys. But, uh, yeah, we've got a busy, busy evening here. And... Um, we're going to be rolling into a special Heritage Signature Auction recap with Mr. Dino Mauricio. Hey, Dino, how you doing? Hey, Bill. Hey, everyone. How are Man, you? Man, look at you're you're, uh, you're hanging out at the Avengers uh, uh, headquarters there. Even what they even yeah. have a pinball machine. I didn't know it's that. It's an incredible man cave. Uh, you could see with all the ah. accoutrements. But uh, no, great to be here tonight. And um, hello, everyone in chat. Well, it's good. It's good to see you again, Dina. We have, I think the last time we hung out was when we did uh, the last one of these, right? I mean, we haven't. Um, that's right. Did, that's right. And again, I think I think year. you mentioned that maybe next time we'll we'll get the whole gang together for uh, the the old uh, roundtable format. But this was just a fun way to do it while everyone's calendars were were preoccupied. But um, yeah, no, happy to kind of share. I know that uh, as you remember from last time, we just introduced some. Um, pairs. I mean, Joe's talked about the merits of those of the significant pieces. What we're here doing here is going to create kind of some contrast between two pieces that have something in common, but that sell at the same price and allow the, the, the folks in the audience to kind of share their preference, you know, A or B, mm -hmm. whether or not if they had to, uh, to pay or, or spend the money for that, for one of those two pieces, what would they prefer? Um, and you and I can have our own selections, kind of like a, Absolutely. a, a mock draft, right? So... Well, it was a pretty impressive signature auction, I'd say. Was that I mean, the largest to date? I mean, in terms you know, of the value, I believe. It I was trying, be. I was trying to dig up that slide where I, you know, I kind of look at the last two years, the twelve signature auctions for, it, and I couldn't find it before the show. But I'm pretty confident that because it, it was like ten point four, ten point five million just in the original art, art category. Yeah, that's right. And I don't think they've ever hit that. Uh, they've gone over ten before. The last seven. It was, a, it was an impressive show, and it, and I think you'll see. I mean, some of the highlights have been—they're just great A examples, and 
I think the 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 the, the market is strong, and I think you're starting to see people consign uh, items that they were holding back, basically through uh, some of the uh, economic challenges of the past year. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's, I was talking uh, to some other collectors. True. We had a uh, fish had a great get together for the tri-state area collectors, and um, yeah, the, the consensus was those prices were were fairly strong at the top, and um, we can talk about a few of them. I mean, do you think the format, I mean, they, you know, they didn't have art in the Thursday uh, platinum, right? Everything was in Friday and then skip Saturday and then over to Sunday. I mean, do, do you think that played any role at all in, in the price? I, you know, I don't know if it affected it, but I thought from a buyer standpoint, it made it much easier. Right. Before, you'd have to kind of segment your time between five, four days and figure out, you know, more the part of the platinum on one day, then two, and then three, and then four. Um, I think this made it easier. You just had two days for art. Um, mm -hmm. What I found in previous auctions is sometimes the, the platinum selections get a little less bidded, bid, uh, let aggressively bid because people are kind of waiting for to see what other come, everything's coming out. I think this way you start out with the art. Everyone's already ready with their budget and with their targets, and um, it was the way we go from the beginning. Right, right. And then you had uh, the Dennis Kitchen collection. There was like 247 pieces, most of Amazing. the original art that went in there. I think that if I, if I counted it up right, counting the uh, the Superman uh, outline, I think he, he probably raised like 1.7 million. So he contributed yeah. greatly to the overall success of the Heritage Auction. I think we'll look back at the Kitchen collection and say, we've never seen this amount of quality underground art uh, come to this market at the same time. In fact, one of the collectors I was talking to had a great quote. He said, what a heritage auction. They had everything, including this kitchen sink. <laughs> that I is so that. true. And it was, you know, that uh, the uh, crumb cover, you know, it was only at like $10,000 about, you know, two or three days prior to uh, to the auction. That ended up over 400. I mean, it was just yeah, the, crazy the, the, that the there were that many people, uh, that. Uh, you know, just waiting on that one. I've, I've never seen you know, that kind of a swing in a short amount of time, you know, you, you know, usually you have like a marquee piece like that. There, there'd be a fair number of bids. In yeah. Advance, but, but not for those. No, not for that one. So, um, so yeah, well, why don't we just go ahead and dive into the, uh, the slides that we've got tonight? Yeah. All right. Well, good. And again, I invite the, the audience to comment and, and, you know, well, Bill and I will share our select, our choices of the two uh, would, would invite the everyone to kind of share theirs as well. So the first one, I, I had to start with Miller Daredevil. And what you saw was a marquee Daredevil 190 cover sell for 250000 on the left. That's 1A. But on the right, I put two comic, two art pieces that together total 246 k but you get a, uh, a Frank Miller Daredevil panel page with uh, just a great one with him fighting ninjas. I mean, what more can you ask there? But then you also have 100,000 left over to, to buy the Daredevil uh, 254 cover, first Typhoid Mary. So Typhoid Mary and Electra, they're kind of femme fatales for Daredevil in two different ages, two different, by two different uh, runs. Um, but, you know, again, for, for about 250,000, quarter of a million. You can either get a marquee cover on the left or you can get a great panel page in the in a in a in a Ramita Jr. cover on the right. Yeah, and as people uh, are mentioning in the chat, I mean the the cover on the left, the 190, that was an overlay, uh, you know, with the Electra, I think if as long as it was the the logo was right. on an overlay. But uh you know, for me, I'd still go with A. I hate to say it. Even, you know, even though having two pieces would be pretty pretty fun. Uh, you know, the, the cover is kind of like in that period where I wasn't reading comics. So from a nostalgic standpoint, that, that 190 cover is, you know, speaks to me a lot more, even more than the interior and, uh, you know, the, the cover to 254. I think I would take the B. I, I actually mm -hmm. think that for me, nostalgic wise, I like the late 70s, uh, late 170 run and then early 180. So between... 72 and 83, 180, 172 and 183. That was the prime Daredevil Frank Miller run for me. He also did more of the of the penciling, and and so there's some additional art um, uh, contribution from Frank. Uh, so I I actually love the the Ninja battle page, and 
you know, the, 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 uh, the, the Ramita run gets you a prime example or probably the prime example from that in terms of a cover. So I'd be split it away, but if I had to, it's kind of like the NFL draft coming up. Do you want a top three pick or two top 10 picks? And uh, I'll probably go with the, 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 the one B here. All right. No, I, I completely get it. And, uh, it's just those two pieces don't say, you know, from a nostalgic standpoint, I mean, and again, if it's, this is, if I had a quarter million dollars to spend, uh, check my pocket, I just checked my pocket. I don't have that, but, uh, uh, if I did, if we did, it would be a fun, fun exercise. All right. Well, and it, the audience was, I think split. Mostly. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, good. So let's see what we got on the second one. So this one are two, Marquee artists, Dave Cockrum and Steve Ditko, on their on their primary um, uh, run. So you have the Cockrum Giant Size X Men number one page, a fabulous uh, battle page. I think if you had to think about the battle page, that's it. Um, and then you have a Ditko Amazing Spider Man, which has four major villains: Fantastic Four, Avengers, Daredevil, but no Spidey. And so on the left, you have a prime first appearance X Men page. People will discount it because you have a lot of smaller x uh, uh, images, a lot of their backs, their interior being being imaged. And uh, on the right, you have a, a, a ASM page without ASM. So um, but they both they both, I think, deserve the price, uh, high price, 100, 114,000. Um, what do you think, Bill? Where, where would you go here? Well, I'm an X-Men fan, so I would go with the uh, with a even with the small figures on there. It's from Giant Size X Men One. I mean, uh, a dream would be to own a page from Giant Size X Men One. So I, I would take this even even with the the tiniest of figures on it because uh, it's it's amazing. And the, you know, like you said, that as far as the battle goes, I mean, that top panel is one of the one of the better scenes I think in the book. The other one, the Spidey page uh, has no Spidey, although it's uh, Ditko getting to draw Avengers and and FF and. Uh, Craven and Daredevil, and and that's kind of cool. That, that doesn't it doesn't speak to me in the same way. I'd agree. I mean, I think between I think Giant Size X Men One is perhaps the Bronze Age book to get, apart from uh, Hulk uh, Hulk One Eighty One, which no art has appeared on the market for. So, and if you have to get a page from that book, I mean, you, it's hard to beat a, beat one of uh, one of the battle pages with all the X-Men on on there. And I do like the Ditko page, but again, I would feel something is missing. Um, I feel like there's something that I would be long for and I would have to buy another ASM Ditko page to complete the to, to complete the to check the box there. So, um, I'd go with A as well. Yeah, I mean, so I like I like the contract. Great. Right. Page. If Spidey was on that uh, B, you know, I I might think differently. <laughs> um, only because, you know, as we know, Ditko Ditko has always been like the gold standard for comic card collectors since before you or I were collecting, right? It's always been the one that was always okay. the most valuable and you know, it's going to hold its value. And I think uh, Nick mentioned it maybe went lower at, you know, in this auction than, than another one, but still uh, no Spidey on it. There's no, no way I'm going for that one. And, and value wise, I think the X-Men page at 114 you know, has a lot and still some upside. I think if mm -hmm. you look at the past records, the, um, it's the first appearance book, but you have page two with Nightcrawler only going for 90,000. Right. Um, and it's not his first appearance because he appears on the first page flash. So it's not mm -hmm. his quote, birth page. So, um, and then there are a number of other kind of, there are some Wolverine ones in there where there's, they're kind of battling with among itself. I think, that, but, but the, the, the battle page there as a half splash or three quarters flat two two thirds splash. I, I think there's a lot of value uh, left on that. And um, I think the ASM sold previously, uh, it, it come to market uh, around that level just about a year and a half ago. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. And I saw Josh was asking about whether the Hulk 181 has ever surfaced and no, it has not to anyone's knowledge. It, it will be, it will be quite the event if a page surfaces. I Absolutely. Will assure you. Right. Pages from 180 are, are definitely out there, but not 181. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So uh, I like this. So, this is a special page. It's just to say a lot of first appearance art has been uh, in the auction. You have the, the Tales of Spence 39, which at 552 was the top, top, uh, top result of the, of, of the art lot. Um, you have first appearance Typhoid Mary. You have first Black Black Spider, Black Costume Spider Man, Cloak and Dagger, a whole story there. Um, uh, Ghost Rider, Marvel Spotlight uh, Five Page, although he's not in costume. You even have um, 
a, uh, a, a Go Michael Golden Avengers annual 10 page from with Rogue's first appearance. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of art. The, the first appearance art continues to be uh, highly coveted and, and receiving strong results. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny when I got into uh, OA collecting, I never thought about the same things I thought about when I was buying comics, you know, the first appearance of a comic being more valuable. That never crossed my mind, I think, until I started talking or looking at Jordan's uh, calf gallery, right? I mean, and just realizing how important it was to him. But even at, even at that point, it yeah. never really sunk in that, that that first appearances were that important in the OA uh, market. But that but that has changed dramatically in the last five, it six has. years. And, and it gives a, a, you know, collectors a whole new way to approach the hobby, right? They don't have to worry about trying to, trying to gauge whether to go for a cover or a splash or a panel page or go for different artists. If it's the first appearance and it happens to be by a minor artist, it, it still has a lot of value. Now, if you have a first appearance with a, a popular character and a major artist, that's when you talk about kind of Brink trucks and uh, gold high values and, and really, really high aggressive bidding. Uh, yeah, very true. Yeah, Chuck says uh, 60k for the first shredder. shredder. Wow. wow, that is uh, that's that is pretty crazy. Um, and then uh, number one Marvel fan, I think is maybe back to my my Ditko comment. Are we buying for investment value or for the love of the piece? I mean, the love of the piece, I think, would be 95 percent of people's uh, first yeah. uh, way they would lean. You know, and I don't think the first appearance collectors are doing it just for the investment value. Either. I think they I, I they think can so. actually show a more of a commitment or passion about the, the 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 character that's being first appearance i mean you look at jordan's birth pages there's some characters i haven't even heard of but if you <laughs> like that character that's your page right i mean that's something that would you treasure so uh, I, I think they have a, a stronger connection to the to the content and the characters as as anyone yeah yeah no i agree but uh but yeah i don't think about investment too often i mean you, when you start buying expensive pieces you think you do think about a little bit about you know where am i where am i going to be with this piece in three That's or four right. years and will i be able to sell it for what i'm potentially buying you know buying it for especially when you're buying at auction uh it does it has to play a factor but yeah you're not i don't think you're doing it in it as an investment um you know thinking about holding it that's right. Most of us, I mean, for most of us, the real uh, issue is uh, opportunity cost and then mm -hmm. relative value. So if you come into an auction with $20,000 as your budget, you have to think about, do I want to put that on one piece or two pieces or four pieces? And if I'm going to go after those pieces, what can I do to maximize my value given my budget? And opportunity cost is if we're going to put, you know, X amount into art, what are the other things outside the hobby that I could do with my uh, my funds, right? And uh, there's a yeah. lot of things you can. I just had to buy a new car, <laughs> you know, and you buy uh, a golf golf course, you know, whatever you need. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've I've made many many mistakes, but those are things you get challenged with sometimes, okay. right? You know, it's like well, that's what we all deal with. All right, you know, and I, it, 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 you wrestle with all that stuff. It's uh, you never know when those things are going to come up, but uh, no, but that's what makes this exercise pretty neat because you can say if you had to spend. Thirty thousand dollars. Yet choice of A or B. You know which 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 you think is a better buy. So, all right. Three uh, is a uh, match between two crossover covers, JLA and uh, JSA crossover on the left, which was actually the second uh, part of that first crossover. Um, and then on the right, you have the Captain America one thirty seven, which is the Spidey mm -hmm. crossover, which a great image of him in the skyline. Yeah, well, I'm I'm Marvel all day, so I would be uh, I'd be picking up co uh, cover B in this one. Um, I would go with A. Yeah, I'll go with A because uh, well, you know, there are Captain America covers that have a more prominent image of Captain America and Spy and 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 Falcon that I'd prefer. I mean, crossovers are important, and X Men or Spidey crossovers are, are are highly covered. But I think the the rarity factor on the left, the fact that it's twice up. And it does have the majority of the of the images um, of of the characters on it. Um, I don't know. I, I, for me, that's 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 a very special piece, and I could see that uh, you know holding a lot of um, appeal uh, mm -hmm. in a broader collection where you do have a lot of Marvel art, but you have some choice DC pieces. That would probably be one of them. So I, I'd love to have the A, but either either would be exceptional. 
uh, edition. Yeah, exactly. Marcus is trying to point out that the older folks in the uh, audience prefer A over B. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, Lee Harmon says Mark, Mark, Mark Levy rule, which is the what? <laughs> is that what? Is that Mark old, rule? Or the forty-year-old breakdown? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, over forty, under forty. Well, Lee feels this is the best Sal cover ever. Uh, I don't know. I have to. To go back and I like there, there's a Sal 158 that has him kind of his origin 155 his origin story Captain America I love that one um, and uh, but uh, this is among I mean Spidey crossover makes it really unique I don't think he, he has another one in the run so mm -hmm. it's pretty special it did go to mark come to market um, uh, same price about uh, 19, 2019 right before the uh, COVID the, the Captain America 137 sold by Heritage uh, for 96 thousand. Oh wow! Um, this is the first JL, JLA cover. It's actually the highest value, of course, of any Murphy Anderson piece, except for um, a uh, a Spectre and a Hawkman cover. But it's number three in the uh, Heritage Annals. Annals. Sorry. Well, all right. So we we were split again on this one, Dino. So uh, uh, <laughs> buy what okay. you love. Number four, we've got a Barry Windsor Smith interior page from MCP with uh, Wolverine all over it, and uh, that really awesome uh, colon Daredevil twenty nine cover. I thought this made an interesting contrast. You have two characters that are beloved but known for their costume, and on the left side you have his origin story, which he doesn't appear in costume, and uh, you know not even a mask. And then on the on the right you have Daredevil unmasked, where you don't really get a full. Uh, uh, image of daredevil in his in his in his uh you know mask you have you have him in in his face i think um you know what, what when i see this uh, obviously I, i'm a big uh wolverine barry windsor smith fan i don't own a page from from marvel comics presents i did bid on this uh close to the end but i didn't uh, i missed so i was uh outbid sadly so let me do that outbid and um i uh i i, I would prefer that one if i had the chance um, yeah, I would go with A as well, as I think would most of the people in the chat, although I saw a few Bs out there. I mean, Bs a fantastic cover. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, I really do like the image. And, uh, the, you know, the, I don't know. And it's, it's, it's a clean colon cover, which, uh, you know, his stuff is kind of wacky sometimes. I, li I like it, yeah. but I'd still, I'd still go with A for the significance of... Uh, Barry Windsor Smith's run. And you're paying top dollar for that. Only a couple of um, couple of, of Bear Windsor uh, Weapon X covers sold above that. Um, and this was triple the size, the, that, that uh, uh, Weapon X in a chair that sold uh, five years ago. It was a $30,000, the one that really set the market for uh, the Weapon X. On the right, you know, there was two Daredevil covers in this auction, 28 and 29. 28 had Daredevil full figure, but he's in a block of ice. And that only sold for forty nine thousand. So there was some disparity between the two colon covers back to back. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, but there's no denying that the Weapon X, uh, you know, was deserving of a high <laughs> price. So uh, that's probably my choice as well. All right. Yes, clean colons are important, Marcus. Thank you. Clean colon. <laughs> nice, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, All there right. So here's a here's a here's a con here's a a battle between two 100 covers. Uh, they, they typically are anniversary covers, uh, anniversary co issues that were done in special pieces. On the left, you have the, a cover by Tom Palmer, uh, twice up, fully painted, just a great one with uh, Luke, Han, and Princess Leia, and all the X-Wing fighters, er, er, everything you'd want in the Star Wars cover. And on the right, you have another Cockrum uh, uh, X-Men 100 story uh, with a lot of Wolverine. I guess people want on a on a Cockrum or any X-Men page a lot of Wolverine. You see him basically cha cha challenging Professor X and actually getting uh, uh, socked by him at the end in that final battle. What do you think, though? Oh yeah, it's B all day long, and uh, I don't I didn't I don't think I saw anybody say A in the chat. So um, I mean. Palmer, uh, a painted piece by Palmer is awesome. I mean, it really, it really is. But uh, again, now you've got Dave Cockrum, X-Men 100. The first panel is pretty fantastic. Plenty of uh, X-Men in it. And um, yeah, you get, you get Wolverine charging at the professor without his claws out. He's, he's my manners. I, I think you'd get another 10,000 if his claws were popped in that. Yes, floor. exactly. In that middle um, panel. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I think Palmer, it, it is a great wall worthy piece. 
wall worthy. But I think um, it's, you know, Tom Palmer wasn't known for his uh, uh, pencils there. He was known like with some uh, inking, some of uh, uh, Inventano, Inventino and stuff. And I just, I think the expectation was that that was going to go mid 20s, I think. So it really got a high result because you're competing with a lot of, of Star Wars collectors, which are, 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 are as fanatic as X-Men ones. And, mm -hmm. and that, was, uh, that was probably a, a well-remembered issue uh, given the anniversary. Definitely. Well, I like, I like the Wolverine. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's that was a no brainer. Now uh, we've got a John Byrne Cap two fifty five interior page up against a Tottleben Swamp Thing. Uh, yeah, I, I chose these two because I think artistically they are one of the most impressive pieces in the auction. On the left, you have John Byrne's Captain America two fifty five, which was done in all pencils, and it was so. Uh, detailed and refined they shot the book from the pencils and if you look at this one this has cap in all of all all um four panels he's in a motorcycle he's in it's just the detail is incredible if you see that and on the right you have a Tottleben example and among his most impressive works i mean this is the issue that batman fights fights swamp thing and if you just blow up this image you can see the the he, he penciled and inked this page but the detail he does and the the artistic kind of techniques he uses to draw the the spray and the 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 the, the, the um the textile texture of, of of swamp thing uh is just remarkable and so i put these as uh, you know for 33,000 36,000 around the same this is these are just two really impressive artists at their peak so yeah, this is a tough one. I'll be honest. I mean, and I don't, you know, I, I never read this issue of Swamp Thing, right? But Todd been somebody who I want to get a great example from at some point, uh, regardless of what, uh, you know, whether, you know, what book it was from or anything. And I already own a couple of uh, burn pages, right? But I mean, there's yeah. a uniqueness to the burn piece because it is all pencil, but then the Todd Ben is just fantastic. So I, I'm kind of, I've got a hard, you know, I, I, I could go either way. I, I would actually be very happy with either one of these pieces. I would too. I'd probably lean toward the burn. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big debates in the hobby is, you know, with his burn X-Men run, um, Austin made him look spectacular. And it's true. Austin's inks were, were, were you know, will make anyone uh, look good. But I think here you can see the power of burn and his pencils and his layouts and his ability to kind of narrate and show uh, action and, 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 and a narrative that, that that's pretty impressive. Um, I, I, Nick says what the single greatest cap comic of all time. I, who you are? How do you argue with Nick there? So um, I, I'd love to have a, a burn pencil. I, just, I have a bunch of burn art, but to have one in all pencils, I think would be pretty special. Well, that's why I went for thirty six, right? Because uh, somebody else yeah. felt the same way, or several people felt the same way. And there was another page in the auction, same issue that sold for about two thirds as much, um, but it only had cap in one panel or half as much, but it only had cap in one panel. So this was the choice one. And I think somebody was, if they wanted a page from this issue, this is the one to jump on. All right. And Wes says if he's going to spend more than $30,000 on a Swamp Thing page, it is going to be drawn by Bernie Wright. Okay. That's a good point. That's right. All right. What do we got next? Uh, a pair of covers from DC. Speaking of DC uh, horror, um, in the 70s, they had, uh, I mean, Phantom Stranger and Spectre are two uh, of DC's uh, occult titles, um, one by Jim, Jim Apera, which actually is a, a, a dead, dead man cameo, which actually is pretty unique there on the left. And uh, Kaluta really doing this, uh, uh, a great job with the, the, the number one issue for the second series of Spectre. I believe that was mid 80s uh, for the Spectre cover. Um, but just two, you know, Really good artist um, drawing DC horror um, uh, covers for about uh, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, I would go with A in this case. I don't know. I like the Kaluta, but um, I don't know. I, I, there's something about um, you know the cover A. It has that more classic era horror feel to it. Uh, yeah, you, know, you get the graveyard. Uh, you know, you it just just feels. It feels like something, you know, I don't know, more more nostalgic uh, for me for a lot of different reasons. Dead man coming out of the wall. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's it's interesting like that. But uh, I've never owned anything by Kaluta, though. 
I've actually owned a few pages by apparel. Mm. I like the I like the apparel as well. I think when you think about how hard it is to draw Phantom Stranger and make him look cool, I think having him as a silhouette on the on the mm -hmm. wall is just an amazing image. And then you know, Dead Man, his one of his superpowers is floating you know between walls, and and I think that that really stands out on that cover. So and and the fact that it's, it's one of his few cameos in the in the run, uh, and I think his only cover, I think is pretty special. Agreed. I think, uh, well, most people went with A on that one. So here you have a contrast between two battle pages. One on the left is George Perez. Everyone loves his fantastic four run. But this is interesting. This is a thing versus Hulk. They're actually battling. And then you have a transformation in the middle row of, uh, of the thing. Thing transforms into Bing, Ben Grimm before he gets walloped by the Hulk. Um, on the right, you have for B, uh, Ross Andrew from his amazing Spider-Man run, 180, um, a, just an exceptional bot battle page. You know, Spidey versus his number one adversary, Green Goblin, going back and forth. I think they appear in in all in five of the four of the panels, um, and uh, yeah, for an artist that's well known for his Spider-Man run. Yeah, uh, it seems very mixed in the in the chat plenty of a's and b's i would probably go with the andrew honestly and um not not i'm more of an ff fan than a spidey fan but yeah but at getting an andrew page i mean I, i've always wanted one and i feel like i don't you know they don't come up as often as a perez ff page would i think i'd have more opportunity to get another ff page maybe not with you know thing battling the hulk but i think i could probably get a decent ff Perez page uh, down the road, whereas the Andrews to me seem a little bit more elusive. I agree. I think that what you do as a, as a buyer is you want to check the box and not have to worry about finding a better example. I think if you got the Andrew Spider-Man page, you can be very comfortable that you got a, you know, Green Goblin battle page, whereas the Perez page is fantastic, has a lot of those elements, the battle, the transformation, but there's always that, oh, I could probably wait for another or better FF page. Uh, from Perez's run with maybe some of the characters, more characters that in, in, in larger images that, that you'd want. So probably into the, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've always liked Sp Spidey versus Goblin. So uh, I'd probably, I'd probably go with the uh, Andrew as well. Okay. Well, it's a 50, 50 in the chat, but uh, we are in agreement on B in this one. So here's an example of for 8,700, 8, two Marvel splash pages that have some sort of caveat to them. On the left, you have a, a splash from Trimpey's Hulk run, which is so memorable, um, but he does appear, again, anterior, he's appearing facing the other way, um, and he's not really doing anything that kind of, he's not yelling, he's screaming, you don't have the face of the Hulk smashing, et cetera. Uh, on the right, you have a beautiful image of the surfer, and we know how, how valuable and how coveted his, his art is. That's uh, by Tom Palmer, but you have light boxes by John Basema. Uh, so Basema, who, of course, drew much of the uh, Silver Surfer uh, Volume 1 run, he, he provides the light box for this with Tom Palmer um, uh, doing the art over it. But it's from the Avengers really good time period that everyone, everyone re remembers reading. But I think the what, what kept the value down was the light box. So, uh, but for the 8,700, you have two very popular heroes in a splash that's definitely well worth it. Now, do you think these went light at 8,700? Um, you know, I, I think the, I, I, I would say if the, the, both of them, both of them are pretty strong for the, for based on historicals. I think, you know, the, the, um, the surfer itself, if it had obviously Bessema inks in there, that would be you know, three, two to three times the price. But I think um, it, it is a later uh, Avengers. It was uh, it was Palmer, who's not as not quite as as coveted on, on the surfer as, as other artists. Uh, I think the image is better. Um, but no, I, I I don't think these are uh, are are value plays at all. I think this mm -hmm. is just this is more kind of just again these images are pretty strong. Flashes tend to draw a lot of interest, and um, the, the Trimpy is from the core run, which is which is correct. Actually I'd actually go with the Trimpy myself because I've always wanted a Trimpy Hulk page of any kind, and I've uh, I've struck out a few times at auction and never been. Uh, and I'm not a big player, but I've all you know the thing is I've tr I've actually tried and failed. So um, so yeah, I would I would go with the Trimpy. 
I'd, I'd agree with you here too. I, I, I like that a lot of the artists actually talk about how they were inspired by Trimpey's Hulk run. And there's only a handful of splashes out there. Um, uh, and this one's uh, got a big image of Hulk, albeit he's facing the other way, but from the core run. Um, I like that a lot. I probably wouldn't have guessed that he would have, go, have gone that high, but that's, that's, uh, that's where the man comes in. Sure. So the tenth pair, um, this is an example of uh, Marvel and DC uh, pieces that have a lot of characters on it. So I think on the left, on A, you have a very special limb um, surfer page splash with about 17 characters, r really all drawn in, in, in kind of in one composition, which I think is pretty impressive. And then you have the Infinity Gauntlet tie-in at the bottom, which is kind of cool. And on the right, you have uh, J. Scott Campbell, who's, who's been getting a lot of attention these days for his art really showing off in his uh, Superman cameo in, in the Gen 13. Uh, it's a variant cover that, that features all the main um, members of, of, of the Gen 13 plus Superman. So I thought for 7,200, about 72, 7,500, you get a contrast in uh, you know, Mar Marvel and versus DC kind of group shots. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I'd go with the uh, Ron Lim Silver Surfer page definitely. I mean, it's a lot of Marvel characters, and I, and only because uh, you know when I, uh, the J. K. Scott Campbell piece is really nice. I think uh, you know Superman is pretty well rendered. I mean, Gen Thirteen is a, you know for me it just isn't a group of characters that I know anything about. Uh, so it it doesn't have any have any appeal for me. Plus, uh, you know, but the but the uh, but the limb, yeah. I mean, there's 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 so much to like in that image. Yeah, I love the limb. I, I always call things unicorn pages because you won't find a page with so many characters by limb. Even on the Infinity Gauntlet where they're fighting, you don't you don't ever have the composition that you see here. Um, I think the J. Scott Campbell would have been higher if it was like if it happened in the Gen 13 run as a cameo and not a not a separate limited series. Mm -hmm. But also he's known for full body Fairfield Fairchild and and some of his um, uh, ladies as opposed to just Ted. So I think there the, the full figure image of Superman doesn't play to his strengths as an artist. Uh, yeah, I totally get that. Chuck Arnold says Ron Lim is the inferior artist of the two. Uh, well, I mean, that's a... <laughs> that's arguable. You know, no, the J, J. Yeah. Scott Campbell pieces have gone, you know, very high. Like his, his, his Spidey, and this is a cover, but his 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 illustrations that over the past two years they've been kind of low twenties to some uh, low thirties, you know, for some of his best pieces. So mm -hmm. um, I think Lim, uh, you're you're doing comparing a splash with a cover, and only a very few, you know, the Lim pieces, the uh, Infinity Gauntlet stuff, you know, with Thanos and big battles, those those get into the twenty five plus range. Um, and if if it was a splash, you'd you'd be thinking you know, higher than that. So. Um, I, I I love Lim Zar. I love the stories. I've, I've I read those back and forth. I don't think I ever read any of the Gen Thirteen stuff, but I do appreciate the the artistry. But um, all right, we're, in, we're in agreement that. then. On yeah. A. So uh, so this next one is a it's a cake break. Of I wanted a cake break, so <laughs> sort of. So what I thought I'd do is highlight what I call the sweet spot. And I thought when looking at the auction, I thought there was a lot of really good. Uh, quality and diverse selections at the 6,600 price lane price side. You have, um, I mean, just just to the first ones. You have you have a Zet Captain America two thirds splash uh, going for the price with many of his panel pages have gone for. And you have a big, you know Captain America appears in that in that three, two thirds splash. You have a Moon Knight by Sienkiewicz, um, uh 6,600. That's the price of some of the better uh, panel pages. And here you get a half splash there. A great Romita. Um, wizard cover of the of Thor. I know that speaks to you, Bill, but oh, yeah. what a great image there. Nice. And then on and on, you just have some good quality pieces. You actually have a, a page from Billy Ireland of all all play. If you ever wanted to see how Billy draws, there it is on the on the the fourth on the bottom. You have a Julie Bell painting piece. You have a Frank Quietly. Um, anyway, I thought I thought this was a nice sweet spot for collectors that you can get. I think some pretty good value because I think with the signature auctions, a lot of the focus and a lot of the bidding are on the kind of higher marquee items. And some of these things just go so quickly, you know, like 10 seconds in the auction, two bids and it's gone. 
um, and people can get some pretty good value here. Great value, I think. So, uh, you know, speaking of, you know, how that, uh, you know, two bids and it's gone, what was it like, you know, at your art get together on, on Sunday, were you bidding on anything? And was we, well, fish had the, the auction, yeah, on had a TV screen, out, but you can't, you can't bid on the TV, but you can right. watch it. And I think Everybody people had, had their, their phones, phones right? out. Yeah. And yeah, I think I had a couple of pieces I was tracking when they came up, we kind of, I went in front of the TV and kind of had my phone out ready. And I think others did as well. Uh, frankly, I couldn't pay enough attention to the, the, the I, I did preload a lot of um, proxy bids because while I was there, it, it was really fun just chatting and seeing other collectors. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, we, we kind of had things better to focus on than the auction, but uh, we all did pull away when, when special pieces came up. All so, right. Um, so the auction could have gone higher if, uh, if you guys weren't like focused. You know on... what? That's a good point. That's But I do think a lot of people did, did proxy bids knowing that they could be um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, engaged. Uh, Were there the cheers moment. throughout the, uh, you know, the afternoon, you know, from some No, because they didn't have the sound on I and mean, you wanted uh, to allow people to talk. So no one really got, to, and, and by the time we got there, you know, this is, this was the second session where you didn't have any of the premium pieces. There wasn't a live auction. So we were just watching the numbers. And I, again, I, I, I'm guilty of not focus there. There was four other rooms to kind of chat and meet other, uh, talk to other folks. And, ah, you know, what? I, I, I kind of thought I'd wait to the end to see, see what I won. So, um, but it was, it was, a, it was, it was, it was a good get together. No, no doubt about it, but people were keeping tabs on the things they were tracking. Cool. Well, I think thanks, could, Fish. I, I should say thanks, Fish, for for all those who attended. I wish it. I would live closer great, to, great to Fish. I'd, I'd love, you know, he puts on a, a, a good spread. I've heard. He does. he does. He uh, does. Let's see. We got two more to go. Two more. So this is for forty five hundred and forty four hundred. This is again Marvel versus DC. On, on the left side, you have a painted piece by Murphy Anderson. I think we reviewed one of his JLF covers before, but this was his rendition of the All Select One Schomburg cover. It's a twice up piece he did in watercolor, and it was used for the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide number 39, which is kind of cool. Uh, has Captain America, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Human Torch, and Subby in a very classic cover. And on the right, I think this one kind of went under the radar. It's a Starlin. Uh, splash with uh, Superman and Green Lantern, but it was from an issue that everyone remembers. It was the first issue, first appearance of the new Teen Titans yeah. in DC Comic Presents 26. I mean, I, I love that story. I, I don't know if I even remember the, the, the Superman Green Lantern story, but this is Starlin. <laughs> this is two big DC heroes, and it's from an issue that if you like to collect first appearance books, it's from that book. So uh, about 4300 I thought, was actually pretty good value on both sides. Yeah, I mean, I even owned a copy of DC Comics Presents 26 for that very reason, right? First Teen Titans. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I, you know, I'd go with Murphy Anderson just because, you know, it's it's so beautiful. And I don't care if it's uh, if it was done on, you know, 8, eight by 10 or if it was uh, twice up. It's it's just such a beautiful image that uh, I'd want to have that one. I mean, I yeah, can't. I like that, too. I, I was a Golden Age comic collector before getting into the oh, into the art so i have a still nostalgia for those type of pieces but i do realize that the overstreet price guide isn't as relevant to art collectors but it is mm -hmm. for the comic fandom like in the comic fandom you have people who actually have all 40 or all 50 of the comic book price guides and i mean those are those are read and, and used as a reference almost uh you know at every convention often uh but not, not so much every more anymore because now it's all about graded books and they're um, census and, and auction prices certainly give you a good lift. But I remember back in the day, in the early, you know, uh, late 70s, early 80s, that the price guide was what you used to kind of figure out how much these books were worth. Um, so I do like that. that. That image is pretty memorable, too. Yeah. Wes mentions that the, you know, the All Select is classic and dynamic, and the DC Comics Presents is rather boring. It's like Green Lantern's checking his watch or something. <laughs> That's right. And what is he doing? <laughs> Like what's up? What's up? Uh, but, but but that is the cover image. The cover image has both of them on the cover. Yeah, it does. It doesn't have the Teen Titans. But uh, all right, so we're in agreement on this one too, right? A is the yeah. Uh, yeah. 
All right. Well, we got one more to look at here, everybody. Let's All right. See. Nice and I, I hope everyone realized I, I like to go into the sub 10,000 category. I think when we did our HA recaps in the past, it was all about everything above like 25, 30,000. So I, I just wanted to highlight pieces that I thought were good value at the lower ranges. And these are two which at 3,600, I thought presented, you know, a lot of good art um and probably some good value on the left you have on a you have a shang chi rudy nebris splash with basically kind of the life of captain of of, of shang chi in the background you have all the a lot of key characters a lot of good narration on 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 his um on his story and what makes him kind of a hero um and on the right i mean i just had to highlight this one this was a great ron friend star wars page you know darth vader in all panels and at the end, he he yells, you know. So you're talking about Luke Skywalker. I mean, he's, it's really at a at a at a poignant moment in in the storyline uh, from that classic run. Yeah, this is uh, this was kind of tough. I mean, I actually do like the uh, the Star Wars page. You know, it's it's pretty nice. But gosh, Nebris, you know, if I, if I could see this one in person, I think I'd fall in love with it. Right? I mean, it, it's 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 a work of art. It's, it's beautiful as a, as a title page. I mean, uh, you know, the, 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 everything's hand, you know, lettered, you, you know, even the demons and painted death and uh, wow. I, so I'd, I'd go with a in a heartbeat. I just think I'd that be, is impressive. I would it, it's got that kind of movie poster composition, which oh, kind of yeah. plays well with art. Um, I, I probably would lean toward the star Wars. I think yeah. the Darth Vader and the ties to the movie and the fact that he's, this is a point where they he, he he recognizes that Luke Skywalker's out there, and he kind of obviously we know what what connection he has with Skywalker. So there's a lot of uh, angst and 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 uh, drama there. Um, but you know, 3600 either way, I think you're getting a great great deal. Um, again, I think these these lower kind of sub 8,000 pieces, um, you know, do get uh, overlooked a lot in these signature auctions. I mean, these two could easily be highlights in in the weeklies. So. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, heck yeah! If these were in the weekly, I I would, oh, yeah, no I would get uh, for the calf update, you know, easily. Yeah. So that's a lesson learned. I think if you're in a signature auction of this quality, I mean, 700 pieces, a lot of just really marquee thing, and then the whole kit kitchens collection, you kind of feel like some of these under ten thousand, under eight thousand dollar pieces, again, just don't get the light of day that they deserve I, none of them deserve they, they do get the publicity and the catalog and everything but i mean i swear some of these come in and within 10 seconds they're off the board and i just i would think that they they would have could merit a lot more uh bidder uh, bidding activity if 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 there were more time you know like mm -hmm. with a weekly auction or something but that's just my opinion but these are all these are just great pieces i think that that good value for that it's one. a tough thing you know for heritage when they have say 50 to 80 marquee pieces, you know, consider, you know, in, in a, in a uh, auction and they have to fill it up with another six or 700 to make it a signature auction. You know, those other pages are going to suffer a little bit. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it's exciting, but it's not like you can have a, I mean, you already, when you already have weekly auctions and you have six annual signature auctions, you can't have like one in the middle of the six signature that has that where, where you can put five or 600 pages in it that are all, that's right. Very desirable pieces that, you know, people are going to want. It just doesn't work. I mean, not with an operation like Heritage when they're auctioning coins and, and all sorts of memorabilia that, you know, that they're getting into nowadays. Uh, it just doesn't work. It just, it can't That's work. Right. And just remember four or five, four years ago, they only had four signature auctions. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was before. Now they have the international, international auctions too. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, think about that. Now, now the volume is really coming through. I think as a collector, it's actually an advantage. You welcome that because that means sure. there's a lot more opportunity to bid on something that, you know, maybe isn't going to be as competitive as, as, as it would have been in the past. Um, and that's good for us. And that's good for all the people that are, you know, attending the auctions, looking for, you know, purchases. Um, and I think the, the quality of the overall auction certainly makes Heritage still a destination for prime pieces. And, and mid and every piece because you're always going to get the eyeballs of the event and mm -hmm. you know so that there's 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 a, a definitely a benefit for sellers as well so but we'll see overall i thought the auction was really strong i i, I do think that a lot of the anxiety a lot of the um, softness that we've seen in maybe some past auctions recently 
I, uh, there it's, it's harder to, it's getting back to that point where it's hard to find bargains. Um, particularly those that are, you know, kind of the, the, the upper pieces, um, because just people quality just draws heavy, heavy bidding these days. And, um, I yeah, no, I agree. I mean, we've been seeing it across the board, even in the comic link auction, uh, you know, the most recent one, I think it, it's, yeah, I think we're, I wouldn't say we're completely back to the normal <laughs> or in that same <laughs> frenetic pace that we were at in 2020 and 2021 and in 2022. But, uh, the apprehension has definitely left the, left the market, I think. Oh which, yeah. You know, which is good. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I didn't even think we were going to hit the lull, but you know, I admittedly was wrong about that. We did have a, you know, a year where things kind of softened a little bit, but, but I, but I did feel uh, that we were seeing those kind of things because in by and large, I mean, the bigger pieces just weren't coming to market anymore. The sellers were right. holding back the good stuff. Holding back. stuff. Yeah, probably right. And now they're, they're, they're getting back into the swing of things. And I think also, um, oh, I should say, you know, Comic Link, had, if, if, if you bought that ASM page that didn't have Spidey, you can get a pretty nice you know, poster art at Comic Link that they're going to have. It's a full figure, uh, twice up page from Ditko that, that would p marry well with that or pair well with that, um, that sure. other page uh, if you want to go for the, the double home run, I guess. Rick Welch points out that Giffen Omega Men number one cover went for forty five. Yeah, I yeah, no and that was already that. twenty. That was already thirty thousand when live opened. It was, it was pretty impressive. I mean, I don't, I don't think I remember an Omega Man cover coming to market, a, a, a Giffen one, in a while. So you know that was going to take off. And um, well, everybody's giving you high fives, Dino. And, well, no, thank you. And again, these are all just. I, I, I think it's. We're at the point where it's it's hard to scratch your head. And it's you scratch your head and you say, I can't believe you know this art, art sells for these prices. But I think in looking at kind of the overall quality of the auction, it's kind of a great exercise to think about relative values and the choices we have as collectors mm -hmm. and, and how we put our money to our collection. And I think those are the those are the interesting um, decisions that make hob the hobby such a such a uh, a fun and engaging one because like you and I have different opinions just on these pairs, much less a, 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 a room full of collectors talking about what they desire and what they looking for and how much they would pay for certain pieces. So uh, I, I appreciate like being able to do this, but I, I do know that you mentioned that, that now calendars are free and we'll probably go back to the round table uh, recap. Yeah, but uh, there's no reason why we can, you know, uh, we can do a segment like this. I think it's fun. There's audience participation in it. Yeah, so yeah thank you for, it's, it's, for, uh, for the, yeah. It'd be a little, a little hard to do if we have Albert and Nick and, you know, Mike or, uh, you know, maybe Dan Potick with us, it would, you know, be harder to have that kind of uh, time to engage with the, with the audience. So I don't think, I don't think we should leave this behind. I, I think it's, it's a, it's a All good right. Well, I love the doing, it. as you said, as we talked about it, it's a, it's a natural kind of um, um, observation for me to look through past sale prices and kind of look at look at how things compared versus similar pieces, similar artists, uh, and also expectations based on, you know, what people felt like pieces should, mm -hmm. should, should hammer at. So, oh. <laughs> so this is noting the AI blank. So I, uh, you remember the 55th birthday? Uh, uh, yes, I, I, well, by, I saw you had one with you, right? Dino's birthday. Yeah, so I, I blew it up into a blanket and put happy birthday, <laughs> Dino. But I brought it to the event so people could see their uh, their headshots on the on the characters and relive kind of where they were in that. I just, it was fun. I think I left it there for Fish to, to he had a, a lot of the portfolio. You better not it, sell so. that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> But again, I want to thank you. It was a great get together. And I would encourage other people, you know, if you if you just open up three to four hours and you invite folks in your area uh, uh, to come around, they will show up because that's what's really enjoyable about this hobby is, uh, is being able to chat and connect with other collectors. And, you know, you go to these things and you get to meet a whole bunch of new people and you get to see some old friends and, and you get to talk about Bill and Cass and auctions and, <laughs> and what's happening in the hobby so it it, it was a fun time so mm. I, I i miss that well, hopefully I, yeah, I'll, i'd like to make the next one i i do i i know i have a standing invite if i want to want to get up there but uh but I, yeah it'd be a lot of fun i'd love to get to hang out with you guys there you're always welcome 
Oh, oh all right, Dino Willis, and I've got a. a hate well, we stayed on track. How about that? We did. You I, Forty-five I, minutes. And <laughs> we did how about very that? well. Uh, I appreciate that, but um, but yeah, well, let's uh, let's definitely you know we'll, we'll wrap, you know get the other guys together. We'll try to figure out when the next signature auction is and see what we can uh, we can work out as far as a team. Because Albert, I can let everybody know, Albert was like disappointed. He was ready to go, and uh, I had to let him know that um, we were doing something different this time around. But uh, but he's he's feeling better and he's ready. Oh, to, good. Ready well, to I can't good. wait to get back in, in in those days. I really appreciate you being able to come on today and great great chatting with you and 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 all the folks in the in the chat. So it's it's, it's great to get your opinions as well on these pieces. And uh, have a great night. Good to see everyone. And uh, I'll, I'll see you in the chat. Thanks, Dino. See ya. All right. Thanks, Bill. See ya. All right. So, yeah. That was that's. I, a wonderful exercise where our chat count is going to go up really high when when we do that i think uh yeah that was fun that was definitely fun and the same thing it was the last time but this was a little bit more refined uh dino definitely takes a lot of time to look at individual uh, auction he pays a lot more attention to uh you know to the signature auction than i do i kind of look at the high points and uh and then only the things that i'm interested in but he's kind of got a he's got definitely got a better view Especially because uh, you know he doesn't play too many favorites between Marvel and DC. I'd say he probably leans a little Marvel, but he he he. I would block DC out, and we wouldn't have any any DC whatsoever if I was to set something like that up. But uh, so, moving on to our next segment. As everybody knows, Comic Art Live is uh, the ninth one is this uh, the weekend of the eleventh and twelfth of May. And as we've done with the, the last several Comic Art Lives, we've got a mystery sketch component. And tonight, to kind of usher in the uh, the time period where we're going to start doing sales for mystery sketches, I've got uh, Mr. Jiggy Cruz. Hey, hey Bill. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jiggy. How you doing, man? Good. So wait, I have to ask you, would you have picked the, uh, the, the, the Darth Vader page or would you have gone with the, uh, you know, the Nevers Shang-Chi? page which would have been your uh i think being uh filipino i gotta go with the nebris <laughs> that, that was what i was thinking i figured you were gonna yeah. say that but uh but i know you're a star wars fan too so i thought I know, you know, yeah i'm a star wars fan too, but with it a little well page. i don't have a, a nebris page so I, i'd get mm -hmm. the nebris page there you go i you know i don't want to and and jeff wedding for that darth vader page mm. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so you know, obviously, I brought you on because we uh, we've done the mystery sketches for the last. I don't know. Is this going to be our fourth? I think. Maybe? I believe it's the fourth. Fourth. And yeah, I, I think that's right it's too. The favorite event of the team. Is it really, really loves doing it? Yeah. Well, I definitely like to you know hear that. I mean, we've we've had so much fun, and you know, the extra time we've gotten to spend hanging out uh, with doing the reveals and the the night before uh, the. The show starts. Oh, this, the, the live sketch show is an awesome event. Like, everyone has fun during that time. It's it's very true. Robbie's in the chat. Nice to see you, Robbie. And we have, uh, Kyle uh, and uh, Ellery also. Wow, oh, very good. I'm hey, everyone. Sad. If I didn't get to say hi, I saw well, we, Gabe, uh, Lee, Jason, so Derek. So uh, I'm I'm just going to throw the link into the chat so everybody knows. So we are starting mystery sketch sales tonight. The page that you know I, I don't have everybody's information down, but I do have all of uh, your your uh, team's names uh, figured out. Unless we're going to add any more before uh, before things get uh, completed. But do you want to go ahead and give us all? <laughs> What's that? Oh, Alberto lives on Mannix in the chat. It's the rules. <laughs> Uh boy, my goodness. Um, but so so from from next comic art, who's who's participating this time around? So I have um we have a separate Facebook Messenger chat already. So mm -hmm. we got Gigzilla, JP Quison, we got Harvey, we have Ellery, we have Mannix, Vaughn Randall, John Amor, Sawi, Robbie Amor, Jim Jimenez, Julius Abrera, Elvin Ching. Raf Gumbok, Kajo Baldissimo, Elmer Cantada, Luigi Teruel, and we have two new artists joining the team. We have Dexter Wee and Mr. Rex Espino. You've seen their art. So uh, um, if you're subscribed to our newsletter, you'll get to see more examples of Dexter's and Rex's. So stay tuned. 
Well, I'm throwing the uh, the sign up link into the chat. So no mailing went out today. This is the first opportunity to to pick these up, and uh, there's the link for everybody. Now, if you if you follow that link, I don't have uh, not all the reps that we've uh, talked to that want to participate is, have given me their artist lists. Uh, Mark Hay gave me a few, and, I'll, and when Jiggy and I are done, I'll, I'll go over Mark's list with everybody. We have a few new artists that have uh, agreed to be a part of it as well. So it's uh, this is always a fun time, and it, I think it, it's you know it's definitely become the cornerstone of the you know the twice annual Comic Art Live event, Jiggy, and you know the, your team has been you know from the first one you know the, a major major part of it. And I obviously enjoy you know getting the time we get to do this. I love being. Uh, playing a role and getting new artworks out there, but also getting new artists discovered. You know, I mean, I think that the that this mystery sketch has become an opportunity for people to you know find new talent, whether you know that they're interested in and in getting other uh, future commissions from or buying their published artwork. And you know, for me, that that's it's very rewarding. I mean, honestly, it's it's my favorite. You, you think I should enjoy the overall event of the uh, virtual con more, but really the mystery sketch is the, is, is my favorite part of it now. It's just, it's, it it's is mine as well. so much fun. It's, it's, it's interactive and social and we get to hang out. And over the past couple of events, the artists have been adding color or increasing size. So mm -hmm. you'll never know what they're going to do. That, that is, uh, is, is very true. And that's, well, that's part of the thing I think that's really nice about it is I think the artists, they want to do a good job because it's yes. something that, uh, you know, it's, it's supporting CAF, it's supporting your business when, when they participate in it, it's supporting their careers too. I mean, let's get, you know, even, you know, the price point is really fair, but mm -hmm. I would like to think that by and large, the artists that, you know, that put, put a little extra effort into the pieces end up getting more work because of it. So it's absolutely worth it. And everybody wins at the end of the day when, when that happens. And, you know, it just gets more artwork on, you know, out there and the, it gets more artwork posted to calf and, uh, and, and yeah, it's funny, but I do think that, you know, when a lot of people see the names of uh, the artists that are participating in the mystery sketch, they go over to calf. They want to kind of get a feel for, you know, what does that artist work like? You know, when they're when they're thinking about the risk reward of of doing the mystery sketch, they do that, and just in in doing that by itself helps expose those collectors to these artists. And um, so the whole just dynamic of the, the entire process makes it really fun. And we've already got a few sales, which is nice to see. So I, also, um, I, yeah. I feel the excitement when or when you send in the uh, the requests mm -hmm. and. There are some, Jiggy, did you get, I can't say if I got your name or not, um, but we hold a, a draft. So artists will get to choose what they want. It's still sort of a mystery. Mm -hmm. And once they turn in their, their sketches, man, <laughs> I'm so amazed with what, what the artists uh, turn over. And I don't know if the, the person who submits the art first I think they're adding a little bit more pressure to the rest of the team. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, I, you know, and I think other people, you know, other reps heard your model too. And I think that they all kind of follow the same, you know, rather than the rep assigning it. Or I remember I assigned them the first time we did it, uh, letting the artists have have their pick of which characters they want to do makes, is, it's going to lead to just better pieces all around. Um, and I know and with I your... them, please don't post any work in progress. It, it, um, it defeats the mystery purpose and we'll have an unboxing. So <laughs> that's where you get to see which one you got, right? That's yeah, absolutely. That's, that is, uh, that is the fun part. And I get asked those questions too. You know, who did I get, which group did I get? Um, and I, can't tell people, but you know, there's there's a level of anxiety that comes along with it. But I can tell everybody, you know, the, the in the last mystery sketch, I definitely got my list to uh, you know the like early segments of the list out a little later than I would have liked. This time around, I guarantee I'm going to make sure that every rep has a partial list to start working on with you know two two weeks before uh, Comic Car Live, so that we can kind of guarantee our you know that we're going to get the art turned around even faster, uh, you know, this next time around, because uh, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, we want to like pride ourselves on is not making people wait a couple months for a piece or something like yeah. that. We want to be able to, you know, have the art in the mail within two, 
maybe three weeks at most after Comic Car Live. But you know, even on our, even on our write up, we want to stick to as close to two weeks uh, in the mail as possible. But um, but by and large, we've done that. We've been able to able to do that. But I'm going to do a better job myself this time around, staying on top of it and getting those lists out. I missed out on a big name. I'm sorry. Um, so this artist has been has relocated to the Middle East with a new job, but he's missing drawing like the Western superheroes. Mm -hmm. So I've convinced Mr. Kim Jacinto to to join the mystery uh, sketch for the very first time. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I, I I well, I know Kim's work, so that was uh, I was pretty excited when you had mentioned that uh, they were going to be a part of this. That's going to be great. Any Lance? Any art from the oh, uh, the boss is Manix's daughter Ulan. So Lance <laughs> is asking any art from. But don't you have Ulan art already, Lance? <laughs> He's got to have at least one one uh, artwork. I know that. Uh, uh, what was it, Mr. Flanders? Didn't didn't uh, Josh pick up something? I can't remember. But Josh picked up a couple of stuff. Um, he posted the Kajo Baldissimo Grendel mm. on his calf, so that one was pretty nice too. Um, I did have a Marcus. If I specify Manix Captain America, well, so yeah, they'll, they're probably gonna do it a Manix style. <laughs> yeah, there, <laughs> there have been um, um, conversations within the chat like copying uh, another artist's art style. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ulan will be joining next comic art very soon. The very first Ulan sale was at the OAX, Bill. Oh, I, that's right. I, I think I saw a very, photograph of that. Didn't, uh, didn't Sharon give, give him some money? Customer. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Ulan <laughs> increased her prices once she got to California with Lance. Ah. <laughs> The, were you coaching her? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't. I think that was all her. She's a smart <laughs> kid. <laughs> oh man, that's that's awesome. Well, you know, well, she's got a smart dad, right? So uh, he might have had a little influence on her. But I know you sent me some commission. You know, some of the mystery sketch examples from the past. So I, I figured yes. I could show a few to give people an idea what some of uh, your. Uh, the, the team has done previously. You said that this was criminal because Elmer Cantada used an eleven by seventeen board for the mystery. It, Elmer didn't get the uh, get the memo that it was supposed to be around nine by twelve, but I, I do believe this went. To, I think this might have been Peter Rose piece. I can't remember, but um, I remember whoever got this one was very happy. I yes, but, and and let alone eleven by seventeen, and that happens. You know. It doesn't happen a lot, but usually like 10% of the pieces end up being bigger than 9 by 12, even though that's the guideline. Uh, it is we, Peter Rose. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I didn't want to cut me tonight. All right. And what do we got here? Uh, Elvin Sherwood Spiral. Look at that. Yeah. Now that was probably and Mojo. You get Mojo as well. Two characters. We remember we, we only let you pick one character when when they specify the mystery <laughs> sketch. However, things like this can happen, and uh, and again, it's fantastic. Spiral's amazing. Uh, Corey says PayPal's crashing on you. I'm sorry, Corey. Not. Uh, I've got like uh, it looks like seven orders. This is Rick Welch's uh, Gigzilla Judge Dread piece. Oh yeah. I got to see this one. Look at that. <laughs> the gun through the gut. Look at that. That is that's awesome. Yep. Rick is saying, Rick, did you put this one on the wall after you got it? Or is it just in a night toy? This one, you, this one you should have at least in your office so everybody can see it. Uh ah, oh, yeah. I love this one. This is on the this is actually on the uh, as a representative piece from the mystery sketches on the on the sale page I linked to. This from was Harvey. from I think I believe the first mystery sketch. I think I so. Think, yeah. Man, and Harvey's man. added more detail uh, ever since. That is amazing. Marcus reminds us uh, we were just looking at the Creative Explorers artwork. Uh, yeah. No, Harvey Harvey outdoes himself all the time. I don't know how he, uh, you know, we know, but, but we know where Harvey likes to start his drawings, don't we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we need we'll, to have uh we need to have him again on the live sketching show mm -hmm. on the on the 10th. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh 
Oh, man. Uh, yep. Oh, all right. Thank you, uh, Cab. We appreciate that. Comic Art Boston. Just, uh, Thank you, Cab. Sketches, same character. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have to show off? Um, Jim Jimenez. Jim Jimenez. He did, yeah, he did uh, a few uh, color pieces this last time, yes. which, was, which was new. Um, I love his black and white, but still, I mean, you get a full color edge to edge nine by 12 at $200. <laughs> Come on, this is not going to happen uh, anywhere, not even at a show. Okay. Only twice a year. On, yes, only November, twice yeah. a year. Yes. Uh, and uh, but, yeah, but no, Jim, Jim's awesome. And, you know, again, I thought I loved his, uh, his black and white work. He had that, uh, I think the first time he, he participated in Mystery Sketch, what was there? there was a black cat. That was just a very memorable image. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that one. I think that was shown during the the live stream. I like, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, he was working. He did that on the live at the live stream. That was the first time we got to see it. Uh, and then uh, John John right? Moore. And John stepped. I mean, I remember this was from two ago, two, maybe. Because remember, yeah. he did the. Uh, Gosh, yes, he, he, he did She Hulk and Spider Gwen, wherein we were counting the number of uh, pigeons or doves in the mm, background. And that's then right. The, even the bricks. Didn't he have like, uh, in the last one, wasn't there like a killer croc? I can't remember now. I'm going to have to go back and look. No, it wasn't, it wasn't croc. It was uh, no. Man Bat. It was Man Bat. Yes. That's right. Yes. But uh, yeah, I mean, and it was like every piece he did in the last one had a story that went, you know, went with it. It was so cool. Um, and then Julius uh, Abreras Cable. Very nice. And I, I would like to think that Aranga might have got this, but I don't I have no idea considering how many uh, cable pieces he gets. But um, but yeah, this is uh, this is a usually if it's Captain America, it's Alberto. But I told him, Albert, um, I'm having a hard time uh, assign. Like I don't want you getting another Captain America from the same artist. So I think Alberto is changing it up uh, this time. I won't say what character, but I think well, he's. Southern Comic Geek got this one. Yeah. There you oh, go. Because I, yes. I was starting to think. You know, I don't know if Aranga's ever gotten a. Uh, he's part. He's drawn for the. Uh, for the mystery sketch, but I don't know if he's ever bought one. So congratulations, Southern Comic Geek. That's, because uh, the he got um, a cable that you posted a couple of weeks ago that you talked about with the Acme missiles and everything from Nix. Mm -hmm. Aranga got that uh, in San Diego last year. Oh, cool. Let's oh, see. Artist choice. Alberto's Alberto with the rolling the choice. dice. My goodness. Yeah, I I bet you the second character is not a DC character though. That's just going to be my my sneaky hunch, but uh, I, I could be wrong. Alberto's been buying a, a little bit of DC art now and again. Uh, now we got a great Grendel piece here. Look this is done by Kajo, Baldissimo, and this is Josh Flanders' uh, mystery sketch. Hey Josh, Josh. He's done pretty well with the uh, mystery sketch. He had a. I think he had a nice Fosberg in the last one too. So yeah, well, I think everybody does pretty well, don't they? I I forgot to say that the uh, Manix has been released from uh, the basements in the U.S. So he's <laughs> back in back in Manila. I hung out with him the other day, and he specifically said, "Oh, I missed, I missed the uh, the solar the the eclipse," and he saw Josh Flanders's post, and he really wanted the. Uh, to hang out with Josh and Sherry during that time because Josh looked like uh, he had a great time. That was the Isherwood. Yeah, Kaz was correcting me on that one. I thought Bosberg was Isherwood. That is true. But, uh, well, I'm glad that Mannix finally made it back. I didn't think he was ever going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I knew he was coming back. He said he was coming back home. Well, I don't know. I was having my doubts. You know, just uh, he, he seemed to be having too much fun. So this is a Shadow Cat Kitty Pride by Luigi Teruel. And I think uh, Lockheed is a, is a lock-in. Mm -hmm. If you ask for a, a kitty, it should come with a Lockheed, right? That's true. If you want to guarantee two characters in a drawing, always ask for Kitty Pride. <laughs> that's, that's one for way. For the DC fans, you can ask for a Booster Gold and you'll get Keats flying mm -hmm. around. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, then there's Manix. He goes ahead yeah. and basically gives you four figures in this one. I was surprised that Manix went o- like overboard with the size. I thought he was just gonna do a, a six by a, by nine, but he did a eight and a half by eleven with this style. <laughs> How do you rein this guy in? I mean, do you have to do you reprimand him? No, it it uh, it, it inspires the other artists ah. to uh, to do better. Also, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes, the love triangle. You got that right, Chuck. Jason says the Goblin Queen should come with uh, goblins. Okay, no, this wasn't for me actually, Anthony. I did not. Uh, I did not get this one. It's not Marcus. Marcus's piece, also, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's almost like a beheading of Cyclops, there almost. Uh, <laughs> I'm still waiting for Marcus to post that one. Uh, he picked up something in California when when Manic. I saw there. a photograph of that one. Actually, I think the piece you're talking about. So this piece was the first time we held a draft. And about well, 100% of the artists, when we saw uh, Peanut Snoopy, I, I believe John Amore was the word. Like, I think Manix should have it. And then everyone said, yes, give uh, Snoopy to, to Manix. And this is what he came up with. And then everyone in the team... Are, are, what? <laughs> mm-hmm. They all wanted this piece. I haven't seen this on calf though. No, the uh, I know the collector that got it has a calf, and um, oh, he yeah, does. Oh, she he does. He's a, I mean, he, he is a uh, European art collector, and um, I mean, fair, I think he's fairly well known. But you're right. I I don't think I've seen this piece appear on calf either. I think this was, if I recall correctly. This was a uh, a gift for his wife, which Ooh. can you imagine? You know, you you, know, you you ask for that, and this is what you get. I think he was pretty happy, so maybe that's why it hasn't wound up on cap. He doesn't want anybody to see it, um, but still, I'm this this was amazing. It was tough to, you know, my wife's a big uh, uh, peanuts fan as well, so I, I had to show this to her, and she was very jealous. <laughs> I I was jealous. <laughs> This is a Darth Vader piece, Samurai. This is this belongs to ML. It was mm. done by Mark Torres. That's right. Who is also participating, by the way. Oh, good. Now, this was an interesting take, right? A Samurai yes. Darth Vader. ML just said Darth Vader, but I well, Mark is a toy collector also, and I think he has those Bandai uh, Tamashi Nations, a movie realization, uh, Darth Vader. Yeah, that came out very nice. You know, Thanks, Emil. It's a little. It's always fun to get a little different take on uh, the characters that you're used to. You, know, you want to keep it interesting for the artist as well. He's, yeah. Uh, there's red glitter paint in it as well. I I I didn't even notice that one when I did. I well, yeah, I did get that one. I shipped that one to Mikhail. Yes. So uh, here, uh, this, got- this is the new uh, Kitty Pride. Mm-hmm. No Lockheed. But you do get an. Uh, we got a second character. <laughs> it's and like by screen default. Tones. Screen tones from Ruff. Oh, look. James has finally broken down and bought. <laughs> Thank you, James. Well, you saw, the, you saw the list of artists. We have some new artists in there. Josh Kassar is uh, one of the artists who's uh, participating. Brereton's back. Andy and Veronica Fisher are doing it this year, too. Uh, or this, I should say this year, for this May show. So uh, Wayshack is in this one, and um, uh, Temple Smith. I'm not looking at the list. I should be. Um, but uh, Jeff Moy came back, and uh, yeah, we've uh, and we have more names to announce. I think you know, there's a, there's a lot of interest in uh, in, in in participating. You, you know, and a lot uh, some of the people are only doing one. Some want to do two or three. We always let the artists kind of tell us what their count is going to be. But, uh, you know, what they're the max they're willing to take is that we like to know that going into it. Um, but uh, but yeah, a lot of diversity in, in the in the group. And then look so at this, this belongs to none other than Mr. Alberto Gonzalez. Mm. And it's a Captain America. And Robbie added the Red Skull. 
Robbie, uh, you know, just can't, you know, can't rein himself in when it comes to, <laughs> to these. I mean, the, you know, we were looking at the uh, piece by Harvey and it, and the details in his pencils. Well, you know, Robbie has his own unique style, very uh, cinematic poster uh, approach to his pieces. And uh, yeah, this one's fantastic. I'm sure Alberta was uh, very happy when he got this one. <laughs> I remember this one uh, from Roy Mercado. Uh, yeah, Doctor Strange. Roy very, just very... messaged saying, "I want to. I'm joining the mystery sketch." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> he's watching. And Bill, he sent me a new, newly finished commission. Can I can I show it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Here, let me. So uh, Roy just finished an eleven by seventeen uh, magic. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Sick. <laughs> that was a commission through through your website? Yes. Wow, somebody's going to be very happy with that. Do you, do you uh do do most of the collectors that get commissions with you do they ask for a preview before uh, that you put it in the mail or do people like to be started? Um you when when I feel like a collector needs a, a layout for approval, I I say like Roy, the, this is the first time this collector's um, picked up something from us. So if you can just send like two layouts for him to choose from, so mm -hmm. and then yeah. But I got three requests from different people of the like the demon version of magic, all right. the same. Right? Was it because of this the show? I don't know, <laughs> but they all came in yeah, like days apart. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is uh, Roy did a few really. Uh, I think how many did Roy do? He did a last? Scarlet Witch. Uh, Scarlet Witch one, also. right? Yeah, yeah, that was the one that we could we could like turn it either way yes. and look great, no matter which which way yes. we turned it. Uh, oh. Sowie. yes, Sowie. Look at this one, so cute. Yes, yes, indeed. These are, uh, we, I mean, we always get a couple every mystery sketch. So, uh, yeah, so he's uh, a very, people People should feel very happy when they get uh, Sowie as their uh, selected artist. And then, Bill, uh, I also wanted to say uh, to the people watching that you should check out or scroll all the way down. Um in, in every booth because you you'll see more stuff um, being offered by by either reps or, or other people like you'll have um, artists having their own virtual tables during comic art live and Correct. we opened we sur we had a surprise at Sawi opened um, little seven by eight busts. And they were all filled filled up in within a matter of minutes. So the I believe there were most of them were premium um, members of Cats. Well, yeah, so that's the. Gotta be, uh, I think it adds to that advantage. If I I'll mm -hmm. announce earlier who will be accepting commissions during Comic Art Live, you'll have to. To, to subscribe to the premium membership. <laughs> Correct. And for those of you, and I'm sure everybody in the, the chat knows this, but uh, we do get, we get a lot of, uh, you know, recently these calf updates have been getting a lot of viewers after the fact. I think like last week's show is well in, you know, like around 1200 or something like that. So we have a lot of people that watch these that aren't familiar with what we do on comic card fans. And uh, that is uh, twice a year in May and November, we have a, a virtual con. We've been doing it ever since May, 2020. And, uh, you know, we have uh, exhibitors, we have panels all weekend, and uh, we're, we're heavily supported on the exhibitor side by both collectors and art reps and art dealers. And what Jiggy's talking about is that when you go to the virtual con uh, and you were to go to Next Comic Arts booth, you're going to see essentially the artists that uh, Jiggy represents who are attending, who may be sketching that weekend, taking commissions, uh, who've brought new artwork for sale. Uh, you know, all of that is shown within the exhibitor booth. So, uh, you know, when you're when you're browsing around and looking at the art during the virtual con, you definitely want to make sure you spend a little extra time tooling around. And uh, there's there's specific lists for artists that are taking commissions uh, throughout the entire exhibit hall. 
Um, and the other thing that G, G was mentioning that is that if you're a premium member, you get access to the exhibitor hall two hours early. So it opens at 1 p.m. on Saturday, May 11th to everybody uh, for free. It's a, there's no cost to attend. But if you're a premium member of Comic Art Fans, you get to get in at 11 o'clock. So you get to see the first art drop and you get to get on commission lists ahead of everybody. And uh, it's, you know, it's a huge advantage. It certainly pays for, uh, you know, the premium membership, I think, as a cost. If you go to, uh, if you utilize that for the early access and both shows that we do each year, that by itself is worth it. And, of course, only premium members can exhibit at Comic Art Live. So if you are going in there early for your two-hour early access and setting up a booth to sell artwork, $75 seems like a uh, steal to me for, for two sh virtual shows and you get all the benefits all year round on cap. So there you go. We don't, we, we don't talk marketing around here too often, Jiggy, but, uh, but there you have it. Uh, Corey is still having trouble with his PayPal. I'm sorry about that, Corey. Uh, Alberto uh, asked which artists will be taking commissions this year on comic art live. I will say ahead of time, since for the people watching you, you have, uh, you have the knowledge Sawi and Ellery Santos will be offering uh, commissions, which also can be picked up at San Diego Comic Con. Can I show a, a recently finished Ellery piece, Bill? Yeah, please do. I'll switch over here. Also a magic. Different person. But Man. you can go to the next Comic Art Instagram and check it out. Um, this commission got a lot of um, questions asking me is this for sales is for sale i said no it's a commission you <laughs> need to commission ellery on oh is, <laughs> was, he, was, he, was he sharing it on his socials so that other people could see the work in progress yes yeah uh that's got to be rough <laughs> sorry yeah. that's that's how it goes but it's see but it, you know but again they were making inquiries so then they know that they can commission ellery and um yeah ellery's definitely uh, has come into his own in the last, you know, last year, I think. I mean, it, you know, come a long ways from the first piece we saw. I mean, the stuff now is just so polished and, uh, and, uh, it's and clean Marcus is, I would call it clean, but, uh, but no, I love, I love Ellery. I mean, he's, his work is, is fantastic. And, uh, and he's just, he's just a joy to hang out with too. So hopefully Ellery yes. will, will, uh, will, will Ellery be joining us on uh, the Friday uh, mystery sketch event? Do you think? I'll convince him. Okay. And then, Bill, sorry, I got a message from a Filipino veteran artist who's not part of the team asking okay. if he can join the mystery sketch. So I'll just email you and loop him in if that's okay. fine. Yeah. 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 And, and then you he, know, can just, he can just uh, send the art to me and I can just ship it all over right. to you. That's true. And, uh, you know, we, we can't take on all artists, but if there are artists that end up watching the show later on and you're curious about participating either this time around or maybe in the future, uh, you know, you should email us. Uh, you can email me, bill at comicartfans.com. I'm happy to take, uh, you know, inquiries. And if, uh, if we have space, cause we do try to, we try to, we don't want to have a thousand artists doing it cause we don't have a thousand buyers yet, but, uh, but we were, I think we were pretty close to 200, mystery sketches in the last show i believe and let's go back what and look at the last thing it was pretty i think it was close i think we were closing in on it um but i don't think it hit it because that yeah i'd have to go back and look actually to see what the sales were actually now now i'm not too sure um but yeah i think it was you can also ask if i can ask or well, i'll say ask uh, mike zek if he wants to do it since he's <laughs> living here <laughs> I'll try. Yeah, that would be interesting. He remembers me, Jason. <laughs> he could just do one. Yeah, we would be happy if he just did a sketch card, right? I mean, and at this at this point in his career, if somebody just got a sketch card of Captain America by Mike Zek, they should be happy at the two hundred dollar price point. But uh, um, but yeah, you know, that, you know, the more the merrier. At the end of the day, I mean, I think, and because I, I do feel like. This time around, you know, we're gonna have, we're we're gonna be giving you guys some more materials to kind of push it out on your socials to make people aware of it. You know, I'd like to think that we sell 250 this time around. Let's sell 300. I mean, that would be great because all it means is we'll we're, we've got more artists uh, that we're able to get money to that are going to be, you know, creating great work that helps uh, promote the show more and helps promote the uh, both you and the other reps that are participating. And yeah, 
I mean, that's the goal. The more we can get, the, then then we can definitely introduce more artists and in, uh, during the November show. I mean, we want the. I'll be honest. We want that. No, while May is big, you know, the November show is our tenth. So we want that one to be exceptional. Um, and you know, and you figure that for us is leading into OAX. You know, three months after that or less. So, um, so yeah, the November shows are a really a, a critical one for us. But May May is in front of us today. Uh, so, um, so gee, I'm, I, you know, I can't wait. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, expect to get a list from me probably within two weeks, and okay, uh, you know, so you guys can get started on them. And uh, and then, yeah, I can't wait to see what the team turns out. Well, well, I'm getting more artists. Like, oh, I missed the message, so maybe more people people from the team will be joining. So, stay tuned. And if you haven't uploaded a mystery sketch on your calf to the collectors here, please do. Uh, it helps the event flourish. So upload it, it on your calf. And there's an art type that you can assign now, you know, yes. for mystery sketch. It has its own art type now. So please. Yeah, that's true. I think because I think there's only like 100 mystery sketches up on calf. And we're probably pretty close to like 400 or 450 that have been created we should have a lot more of those up on the site. So yeah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, let's all keep promoting this thing and, uh, and it, we're all, we're all winners in it at the end of the day. So, um, all right, Jiggy, I hate to do this. I, I got, I got a couple more segments. Thanks everyone. Yep. Later. All right. Uh, so yeah, I saw Alberto ask that question and Casper got him. Uh, definitely within two weeks for OEX ticket sales and uh, the hotel registration link. We should be pretty close with that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, my email is pretty full right now. I don't know how many have come in, but we've certainly got a lot of orders that came in. And I, we're happy. Thank you. That's the way to kick it off. There will be a mailing going out to everybody tomorrow because uh, the other big you know thing that's going to happen tomorrow is exhibitor booth setup starts tomorrow as well so i'll have any i'll probably end up doing two two separate emails one for the mystery sketch and uh once we've kind of got everything set up for the exhibitor uh setup i'll send out a separate one to that uh to that list too and um to look for those I, you know two emails tomorrow but um but yeah mystery sketch is one of my favorite things we get to do every year now uh let's see peter russ says thanks for adding the mystery sketch as a calf art category yes everybody's been wanting that I, I i remember many people were uh were asking even after um the second one and we didn't do it but it is there now uh makes makes it a lot easier for searching for stuff so um let's see here where am i moving on from here i've got uh i got a few videos to play so i'm gonna go ahead and uh play this one now there like we were talking about the get together last week that was you know fish held one and uh the thing is a lot of collectors came in from out of town and on saturday they actually went to anthony's warehouse and picked up some art did some wheeling and dealing and coin flipping and um i think fun was had by all and oh you know what even before i show that i do want to you know I, I actually had a note in front of me so stuff for splash page because splash page sent me uh a list of their artists which are on the page that i linked so let me go ahead and just rem uh, give you some information on some of these that Moritat is uh artist on hellblazer and jonah hex has worked with jimmy palmiati a lot um he's he's going to be doing mystery sketches bridget connell has worked on lady baltimore and bprd she's going to be doing uh some mystery sketches um I, you know what? I'm going to include this in the mailing tomorrow because there's a lot here. But he was giving me information on some artists who aren't doing mystery sketches. But but of note is German Peralta, who didn't do mystery sketches the last time around, uh, did them uh, last May in 2023. If you remember that the piece that Mikhail got, the Galactus Silver Surfer painted piece, uh, you know German did that one, and uh, and he is going to be uh, uh, back and doing some mystery sketches in uh in may so that was that was great because every i think everybody there were a fair number of people who were disappointed when he didn't return in the november show last time and then uh, mark has several artists that are going to be bringing new art for sale that won't be posted to splash page before the uh, comic art live event only will be available during comic art live first so uh i won't give you that list but i'll, I'll put that in the email tomorrow too because you know again you know the next four weeks there's going to be a lot of pr going out related to uh comic art live so i'm going to save some of this for later but 
But again, I appreciate Mark put, putting in the time. I got an email from Tatiana during the show. I think she gave me the list of some of her artists that are going to be doing it. I'm waiting for uh, Yoshi from uh, Japan Comic Art and uh, Ken from 4C to get me their list as well. And uh, and I can tell you that definitely Kazra and I are both talking to other artists and expect a wrinkle or two to be thrown into the mystery sketch this year. Can't I don't want, I'm not going to say what the wrinkle is yet, but maybe by this time next week we will be able to. Uh, to tell you about that we've got a we've got a few ideas we just need to get some confirmations in place before we say anything about them so all right now back to uh munachi new jersey or whatever munaki i, I don't know how it's pronounced but uh jason could probably tell you in the chat but at any rate jason is in this video clip along with james and aranga and a few other collectors i think uh uh and of course anthony and sharon are in it too so here is uh here's the uh a three and a half minute video clip of uh, some shenanigans going on at anthony's warehouse last saturday so we're coming to you from the warehouse today where i'm having some people over and Whoa. yeah open Whoa. house Whoa. 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 <laughs> wow <laughs> what kind of bangladeshi Whoa. noise is that Oh, hey, what's uh, what's happening? Let's not put that on the internet. Anyway, so James came in, and uh, we're doing a big deal. Big deal. Look at this. Oh. I'm handing it to him. He growls so well. I'm not going to growl. Did he say you give him a hand? Thank you. You're being uh, very transparent and fair with me, and uh, that's uh, the way we like it. Here at 43 Romeo, thank you, Jay. Now, what do you want? Do I have to pay you off for it? You should start putting a pile together. Things you like. I got up early because my dog was barking at you. Over me? When was I over you? Mom! I'm Anthony Schneider, and we're here for Dueling Dealers of Comic Art! Who are you here with? I'm here with Aranga. Artist debonair and major art collector all the way up from Alabama. Alabama? Alabama! He's here to do a signing at Big Time And the Seagull. Oh, are you really? And other people's. So. Four hundred. Yeah. So when I said two ish, and you're gonna agree to that, but so you said eighteen, and I was like, uh, all right. So let's flip. A eighteen or nineteen? Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. So heads or tails? Uh, heads. Where'd it go? Oh, it's over here. I trust you. I can't see shit. Heads. Is that what you said? That's what I said, yeah. Let's heads. go to the video. Heads or tails? Uh, heads. Alright, so I'm at 332. I'll flip you for the last 200. Okay. So, we got a deal? We got a deal. Alright, All right, so I just traded that Casada from James. Uh -huh. I'm trading it to you with a little bit of I'm really excited about. Yeah, there's a little bit of cash over on it. So three or thirty-two on this one. Need a coin. God I want damn. that goddamn dime out this time. Hey, somebody give this man a quarter. I, give I, only me got, a dime I got dimes. Man, why do you have dimes? Oh, you want me to say why? Back well, down because no one carries change anymore. So you get what they give you. <laughs> okay. All right, it'll All right, work. So here it comes. It's got a heads in the tail. Three or thirty-two on eighty-five hundred. Call it in the air. Call it in the air. You go ahead. Heads. Hold on. Heads! Hot sh where? <laughs> it is tails. <laughs> Wait, you lying to me? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 33 for, for that. Heads. There you have it. <laughs> Hit the cha-ching right there at the end. Uh, so Anthony won and lost. Okay. That's why you don't do coin flips, as far as I'm concerned. I would never do a coin flip. I just can't, uh, I'm not going to risk it. You tell me how much it costs and we're going to stick with that. TMD1, <laughs> Tariq says it was rigged. Yeah. Uh, as long as Anthony doesn't get to uh, 
pull the coin out of his pocket, I think it's probably fair. Um, but hey, I've got Mr. Chuck Arnold. Chuck Arnold is our guest tonight uh, doing the picks. Mr. Snork had other things to do. So uh, let me bring Chuck in here. Hey, Chuck, how you doing, man? I'm no Chris Snork, but uh, I can I can hang. Although, I have to say, this has been a long show so far, so uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I know, we got two hours in already. I know. I, I apologize. It was, it was fun listening to you and Jiggy. Uh, that, that was, uh, I think that, uh, that I'm going to do a mystery sketch this time. I'm in. Good, good. You know, I, I'm sorry, I bumped this art. I, I actually was foolish enough to think that I might do an unboxing during the show. Do it. Just do it, Bill. That's what we all, that's what we're here to see. I'm going to do it. It's, I have some art over here. So you show your art, I'll show you mine. All right. All right. This is, uh, I, I haven't opened it yet. This is from Mike Oming. He, I'm doing a sales show and interview with him the Saturday after next. So um, I, I have no idea what he was sending. He always sends some good stuff. Usually some creator own pieces and um, some power stuff. So let's see what what did he bring here? I'll try to. He said he was doing more. He was doing like the shake and stuff. Like he's gonna do some illustrations this time, right? Uh, no, that was uh, like that's Linsner. Linsner is supposed to do mm -hmm. uh, like you know half commission style pieces, which will be cool. Mm -hmm. So I got uh, what is like a powers piece here. Ooh, nice. And looks like another Powers piece here. It's got Bendis' signature on it. Talking Heads page. Then uh, look at that. Yeah, look at this. This one's it's got uh, old retro girl. That is nice. Yeah, I don't know if that's a cover or not, but uh, Bendis signed it as well. Yeah, it's from 2014. So that's what I, you know, I, Mike's got so much art. Yeah, uh, he just goes in and you know, Taki goes and digs in the vault a bit, and uh, I know this was a cover too. Mm, that that one beautiful. Yeah. Um, so yeah. this is like a prelim. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. I don't know. I guess it's just a prelim. Prelim to some uh, looks like a Kazari kind of cover. Maybe Tarzan. I don't know. Looks uh, Frazetta inspired. Oh, look at that. She's got mm. legs for days. And ben and Bendis's signature right on her thigh. But who does Bendis think he is, Stanley? <laughs> uh, oh yeah there you go Bendis nice. he, he'll sign it anywhere it's just uh, really big Bendis right in the middle <laughs> it is it's the Stanley signature yeah yeah he's missing with us a little bit well, I love um, uh, I love this stuff I mean Powers was such a uh, important series in the like 2010s uh and and oming's art is just amazing i agree we had that uh kevin sharp segment with uh mike last week and you know he said toth toth is a big influence on him you, and I it, guess, right? you know the light and dark he, he really he really likes to play around with that and it's funny you know uh one of the things i remember him telling me was that you know he, a lot of the times you know when he's doing this he just does like the outlines and then digitally fills in the ink for publication because mm -hmm. it's faster and then to finish the work so he can sell it he goes back in and fills the blacks in later but but that way at least he can get things done on time yeah no i mean oh wait a minute this one might not make it for sale. <laughs> it's not for sale <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> I think I think Mike did this one for me. I gotta go check. There must be a letter look at, in here. Look at these shapes. I mean, you know, we were. I was laughing earlier about the Green Lantern cover and how Green Lantern was cocksure and had his mm -hmm. like, like his he's bent forwards. And I, I guess they were just trying to fill in the space on that cover or something. But I really like how like what Thor is doing there. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. No. I, well, that's what you may not see this one at the show. <laughs> I mean, okay. they have to talk with them. Uh, because I, for whatever reason too, they they like me working out the prices with them. So I usually not all the artists do that. A lot of times I just get a price sheet. But when Mike look, is, I mean, look on this one, the fourth pan, the third panel down, the fourth panel of the page, like that giant shadow. I mean, how do you work that out? That's very thoughtful on mm -hmm. the art part. I mean, yeah. you know, you can black out the background, but just having that dark shadow down one part of the face really says something. It's amazing. 
Yeah, we carried it through here too. Mm -hmm. And then it signed it right down there too. Huh. Oh, that's a Bendis. little Darwin Cookish kind of Parker vibe, right? Yeah. You get two pages on one. Mm. Uh, boy, you give me a lot of art here. Oh, How's this going? You doing the art sales? I, I thought that the Brian Hitch thing was great. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, I, I can't complain. I mean, yeah. it's it's a lot of art to ship, but um, but beside that, oh, there's some, there's some, uh, oh. yeah. yeah, little, little nudity on that one. I got, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's quite the thigh gap. Oh, here you go. Boy, he's doing he's doing the hitch ultra wide stuff here, you know. Yeah. But he filled in the whole page with black. Yep. I don't know. Does he have assistance? I mean, who's doing all that black? Well, that's what he said. He would he, like typically he would do all the blacks in digitally because he wants to sure. get it to the you know to the printer. Get but it then out. We'll go back later when he has time. Uh, let's see. But no, I think it's just he and Taki. And there you go. One more. And then, no, there's two more down here. My goodness. Well, he's never given me this much art before. Mm. This is all Powers art, right? I mean, yeah. besides the Thor. Yeah, I mean, besides the Thor and whatever that one uh, Frazetta-inspired piece was. Um, yeah, this is like all Powers. Okay. Did you read Powers? Do you remember that? I've I mean, only read a few. Uh, like, I read, like, the first two trades, I think, or something. But that that was about it. When Bendis was doing powers, Bendis was doing with, I mean, with Oming, um, it was, you know, it was through the icon Marvel thing. And then I think it came out with image afterwards, but it was really, you know, a, a really great series. Like it was very, uh, the art on it was fantastic. The, the, the idea of like, Oh, hey, you've got these superpowers and like it's kind of a murder mystery thing. I don't know. I think for the time it was really innovative. And, uh, you know, I seem to remember watching the Sony show, maybe an episode or so, but I don't, it's not terribly memorable for me. But um, it's unfortunate because I always thought that book was great. Right. Well, it gets overshadowed with other, uh, you know, down to earth, uh, uh, superhero things, the boys. I mean, you know, uh, well, but, also, yeah, it was good for its well, time. You never know what's going to take off, right? You don't know. Like the boys, the boys is surprising. Like the boys, I always, I thought the comic was good, but mm -hmm. like it was over the top, and like it was at the same time as Preacher and everything. And I always like Derek Robertson's art. Um, yeah. And but it kind of moved from Wildstorm, and then it was a dynamite. It went all over the place, and was. And it was sort of a niche thing, but the TV series really, like, it, it really took the piss out of everything like Marvel. Like, it hit just at the right time, and it is exactly. an amazing series. Maybe even better than the comic series, which I don't say that very often. I mean, I, I uh, you know, but... Uh, the writing I, is really good. <laughs> and the yeah. acting, too. I mean, it's like you, you couldn't uh, you couldn't have translated a, that book any better. Yeah. than it has been I, I i'll say that for sure but but no i mean but powers was i, I should go back and, re, and reread it and pick up a few more of the trades because it, it's great i do like michael's stuff a lot and yeah, kind um, of a combo of of the criminal you know and uh the the superhero stuff which was mm -hmm. i don't know it was a lot of fun at the time I, I i need to go back and read with everything do you guys do this like where you want to like you're like I think about burn X-Men and you keep seeing these burn X-Men pages come up at heritage or whatever. And you're like, what's the last, I mean, I haven't read those in so long. I need to go back and read that. James, <laughs> do we need to talk about this? Is I haven't seen thing? I haven't watched Have a single episode yet. So because I mean, it's very quietly inspired. I won't go into it. Maybe that's no, that, no, don't it. I don't want to know anything. anyway. It's fantastic. And as a matter of fact, I made myself notes. I didn't, you know, a lot of times I'll make notes on the art that mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that night. And I didn't do any of that this time. So we'll see how this goes tonight. But I did make notes just like listening to you guys and listening to you and Jiggy and uh, everybody talk. And one of the things I said was X-Men 97. Bill, this is, it's a love letter for us. 
Yeah. It's, it's for us. And the other fun thing is, I know you talk about watching things with your kids. Mm -hmm. I watch it with Abby. I watch it. We got up early this morning and watched the new episode. She's so excited about it. She's 10 years old. It's so uh, much fun. Awesome. Because in X-Men 97, when, 90, when it came out, I was indifferent about it. I was kind of like I still read comics, but like I was in college, man. I didn't care about X Men. Um, like you know, I mean, I cared about the X Men as much as I always will. But like the cartoon show wasn't that important to me, right? But now watching it with my daughter, it's a wonderful experience. And then she goes back and she'll come home and be like, somebody at school was going. <laughs> So, anyway, it's a great experience, and this episode was fantastic. They're flying through all the stuff. It's all our X Men. It's all our X Men. Like, all right, I'm. I wanted to wait till it and was. Cyclops is a badass in it. Like in the, episode, in the first episode. In the first episode. It was that. Remember the cartoon, the X Men cartoon from like 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, that, proud of the X Men. It's yeah, not like that, was, that, that, made, that made Cyclops into a wimp there. It's not. You know? <laughs> See, you're laughing. <laughs> That's when he got a bad hit the bad rap. Yeah. He he always was a, he was a badass all the time. Oh, yeah, him. boy. In the first episode of X-Men 97, Cyclops does something. You just gotta see it. He jumps out of a plane. I mean, it <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> it's great. It's great. All right, can I show off my art? Yes, it's your turn. All right. Uh, one. I have this. You were talking about. Look, you know, you know, my collecting. Oh, yeah. It's Chaken, Guy Gardner, Giant Splash, full page splash, fighting these aliens. I don't know. Some of this later Chaken, like, this is my favorite. And I think Chaken on Guy Gardner is just amazing. And it's funny. If you look here, it just says space. That's the <laughs> oh main thing. You kind of wish he would have filled it in there a little bit. Right. I mean, it's just amazing. It's an amazing piece of art. He did this guy Gardner series, but all uh, all shaken aside, really the best page I've gotten lately was an all-star Superman page. Uh yeah. I wouldn't even mind having one of those. Well, That's I have a few, but this one was such a key page and having this, you know, I haven't, I can back it up a little bit. I've gotten quite a few pages from this series and I haven't had any like with Superman with the full S and, you know, you hit those things as a collector where you're like, all right, I'm going to go above and beyond so I can collect something that's something key and I always make the joke about that being a key page because mm -hmm. it's the page that where Superman introduces the key to Lois Lane like oh this is from a dwarf star or whatever but also I haven't ever had a page like that I haven't ever had something that like you know meant that like I can go Oh, well, you know the page from All-Star Superman where Superman introduces the key or like, you know, it would be something like the same thing with John Byrne or uh, George Perez, or whoever it is. I haven't ever had anything like that. Mm -hmm. Most of, I always said, most of my pages have been Jimmy Olsen pages. Sure. You know what I mean? Secondary characters. I love John Byrne. I love Howard Chaykin. I love, but I don't have a shadow cover or anything. That's a key page. I um I, I think I set the record on on uh panel pages from All Star Superman with that. And I'm very proud of it. I'm I, I'm not I'm very humble about it. I'm 51 years old. I'm able to do it now so I'm happy about that. Mm -hmm. Um and so you went uh, to the mat for that one. <laughs> well, you have that's what you have to do, right? Oh, yeah, I know. I know. There's there's right? a, there are many collectors that uh covet 
uh, you know, you know, pages from that. And it's one as important as that one, a key one like that one. Uh, yeah, you weren't alone. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm very humble about it. I don't mm -hmm. feel I'm not, I had to sell some things to do it. I'm, you know, I had to let go of some things that I bought over the years to be able to do it. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of it. So I'm, I'm happy to have that page and I'm happy to show it off to everybody tonight. Congratulations. I haven't put it up on cap yet. So, so I'm curious, how did you, uh, you know, when you, when you needed to raise the funds, uh, the funds for that, did you go to CAF or did you go to friends yeah. that knew you? you I knew went to particular Comic piece? Link. I contacted Comic Link. Anybody yeah. that wants something from whatever, I would say it's heritage is the exact same way because that mm -hmm. guy, the guy that's the heritage guy, he comes on here and says it. He's like, hey, if you're thinking about buying something, contact us, talk to us about it. I contacted Comic Link. I was like, hey, I think I'm going to go to the mattresses, like you said, for this page. And uh, but I have some things I can sell. And then we talked about it. And I was like, I've got this. I've got this, you know, whatever. And they were like, I mean, we came to the penny. Like I was like, I think it's worth this to the same penny, like at the low end. Mm hmm. We came to the same conclusion. I can't remember what the guy's name is. I'd have to look at my email. And so uh, then what they do is they give you half and they're like, we'll take half off and then half you'll get it, whatever. And then I paid the rest. And uh, and that was it. Like it was um, it was a pretty uh, frictionless experience. And I thought about doing it at, at uh, OAX initially. Oh, yeah. When, I, when we were at OAX, I, I, this page was already up there, and I was already thinking about that. I was already like, ah. And I'll tell you, God bless Nick Patera, because he just uh, goaded me on. In the same time, like, you know, we're both quietly collectors. And he's like, mm -hmm. I didn't get it. What are you going to do? Are you going to buy this? Anyway, he's he's he, uh, he's an enabler when it comes to uh, Vin's artwork. In, That's sure. in the best way. In yeah, okay. best yeah. Well, I'm sure he he was like, yeah, it's worth it. Go for it. You know. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I I mean I, you know what? I I don't have any idea. I mean, mm -hmm. but it it I feel, and that's what he said. We talked about it after I got it. He was like, "How'd you feel after you got it?" I was like, "I felt good for a second, you know." <laughs> and then you're like, and then there's another piece coming up on here, <laughs> and then there's something else, and then there's something else. But really, that is the sickness that we have. Well, yes. But what I was just saying to you, and it's, it, it goes along with it, and hopefully, and I assume everyone feels the same way, is that when you get something like that, you kind of take it to that level, you're kind of proud of yourself to be able to do it because you've collected certain things over the years and you've, you know, got a, a page like I had a check in page that I was like, okay, I can let this go. I can let this go. And then you have enough cash and whatever else to be able to, um, to, to be able to do it. I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I just felt really proud to be at that, at that point. Anyway, as well, you should be. Yeah. So, uh, before we move into the calf update side of things, and we have, you know, we have a, a Got other stuff. I'm gonna omit probably my heritage picks. They're on my they're on my report. On, uh, Is Jeremy John Byrne on there? Because I was told by Chris Snorek I have to not talk about John Byrne tonight. Uh, what did I have in my heritage picks? I had no, there was no Byrne. I had a Bagley, a Garney, a Frank Thorne strip, which was really nice. A Ron Lim piece, even though he's not as good as J. Scott Campbell. By your own work. I mean, I, I made a note of that. Do you guys want to talk about that? No, 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 because we don't have time. I mean, that, that, that would be a whole show probably Am all by wrong? itself. Am I wrong, Phil? I mean, J. Scott Campbell, he changed the game. Ron Lim came in. Listen, I think Ron Lim's a fine artist. You're talking, I just told you we can't be. You're, no. ready to go, so you're ready to go to the mat for, for J. Scott Campbell. Oh, yeah, I will. I've never been a fan of J. Scott Campbell. Really? I, I hate to say that. No, I mean, I, it's solid. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful and it's in its own way. But as a buyer, I'm I'm just not interested in his art at all. I hate to say it. And Ron Lim doesn't do a whole lot for me either. Yeah. I I don't mind saying that that too. Uh, but um, 
but yeah, I'm just not, I'm not enamored with, with the style. I don't know why. I mean, what, what the books. I think it's the time. Hard. I think here's the thing. And this is what Chris and I talk about a lot. And I'll say this, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, preclude it with this, which is that everybody has their thing. And I love that we all do. I think comics is for everybody. I think mm -hmm. comic art collecting is for everybody. I think it's wonderful. So, um, but J. Scott Campbell came in at the time he was post Jim Lee and he was my age at that time. And right. so, so when that's, he so came that's in, the connection for you. Then. Yeah, you that's know, the you, connection. That's yeah. the connection. I for tried me, remember, I wasn't buying comics from 89 to 96 right. or 97. Campbell came but in. What, you see like, the Jack Davis and the Mort Drucker in J. Scott Campbell, because that's what he's doing. He brought Mad Magazine to Why are we talking about Jason Action Comics? <laughs> he did. He did. That's what he did. That's, uh, I mean, he's awesome. I don't we're know. We're going to have you, you need your own show, Chuck. No. Friday well, morning update with Chuck. Oh, it absolutely. might be Friday evening update. Me uh, and Kazra <laughs> and Bill Cox. <laughs> uh, hey, Black Viper Adorn is on Team uh, J. Scott Campbell, too. So, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot. I know there's a ton of Campbell fans out there, but. Um, Anyway, we'll talk about Campbell another day uh, when we can do when we have time to do deep dives on creators. <laughs> yeah, we're getting late, aren't we? Uh, but right. yeah, X Men '97. Yeah, I uh, am. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's James talk about Chaken background. Back. The guy that did the Chaken art and had the background. Did you put him in touch with uh, Chaken's uh, with the uh, the Chaken drawing? I'm not and he had the background done by the by the letterer. Oh no. Oh, okay. Anyway, I, so. I thought that was amazing. New York City Art Show. I'm gonna be there in two weeks. Sorry. That's I'm right. There is uh that that uh, New York Comic Art Expo, I think is the name of it. Is that right? Yep. I'm gonna yeah. be up uh, in New York City in two uh, weeks. So everybody can say are putting that on. I know there's um some artists that are gonna be there. There's uh, some collectors setting Jake up. Who's gonna be there? Who is? Jake and Howard Shaken. Oh, that's right. Howard's gonna be there. Yeah. yeah. I think uh Steranko and yep. I know Hildebrandt canceled. I, I saw that. Um oh, yeah. I can't remember all the other artists that are gonna be there, but yeah, hey, it's good. So uh, always good to see. Uh, I mean, and they've done that show a few times before, but I don't think they ha had that many artists at it. So I'll be curious. Take lots of photos, Chuck. I will. And don't I take them vertical. Video. Take them landscape for me. I mean, okay. what is with these guys? Mm -hmm. Anthony, is Anthony on here? Anthony, Anthony, Anthony take, Anthony, take, yeah. take horizontal video. Just I think I, I, I think he d he's doing it because he's been posting to like Instagram and some other places. So he's been shooting in vertical. Because you know, because what what are they called? Reels and then the shorts and all that yeah. stuff are all. I, I think that's why. I uh, and, he, and Anthony said yes. So um, uh, hey, but before before yeah. we we get into anything, I do have a, a, a it's it's a, it's a short flip from Jason D'Ambrosio. Who is that? Who is that, that guy? guy? I don't know. He's oh, been. Yeah. I've seen the name pop up in the chat a few times, but uh, but yeah, he. He, when he was going to uh, Fish's house for the OA uh, collector meetup, he decided to, you know, reshuffle the his Itoya and put together a special portfolio just for the uh, for the event. And he wanted to share it with everybody uh, who couldn't go. So this is what we're going to get. We get a weekly flip. It's like three and a half minutes long of Jason showing off the artwork that he showed off to what thirty or forty other key collectors uh, at Fish's house that day. So let's take a look oh, and wait. see what uh, what he did. Hey Bill, going to a meetup at a fellow collector's house this weekend, so I put together a folio to go. So I figured I'd do a flip for you for people that aren't there. First up, Excalibur by Joe Maduera. A couple Magnetos. One is the first series. A uh, Marvel card by Tom Morgan, and the other is Bill Sienkiewicz. Here we have a Art Adams prelim for a classic X-Men 10, and a page by Chris Pachalo from Gen X1. Couple pages from New Mutants 16 by Sal Buscema, first appearance of Warpath. 
Uh, White Queen by Order Adams and a Death's Head 2 cover by Paul Neary and Liam Sharp. Sam Keith, Wolverine and Hulk. And a uh, What If Wolverine and Conan Met by uh, Gary Kapowski. I'm not sure how to say that name. Couple Sal Buscema pages from ROM 31. Uh, real fun because uh, really early Rogue appearance as well as a recap from her first appearance. Captain America Colgate ad by Kieran Dwyer and a uh, page from X-Men Adventures 1 by Andrew Wildman. Frank Quietly Wizard cover from X2 as well as a Contest of Champions page from John Romita Jr. Couldn't leave out a Fred Hembeck, a nice cover recreation of Hulk 81, and a Rob Liefeld X-Force 5 page. Gary Frank Gen 13 cover, and a David Finch Wolverine. Oh, a little John Byrne X-Men page. Terry Austin, first issue from 108. And a Josh Cassara, Wolverine Black, White, and Blood splash. Those reds are all colored in by Josh. Larry Stroman X Factor page from the Peter David run, as well as a Brett Blevins New Mutants page from Inferno. Brent Anderson, God Loves Man Kills X Men page. And a uh, Greg LaRoque. What a uh, Marvel Team Up 150 page, uh, the last issue where the X Men and Spider Man fight the Juggernaut. Bruce Tim Goblin Queen, as well as a John Buscema page from Miss Marvel One. Nice Sylvester Inferno page uh, with Sinister and a whole bunch of X Men, and a Mark Texera Wolverine page. An X-Men cell from the Pride of the X-Men, as well as an Adam Kubert Wolverine page. A little Art Adams from Annual 10 with Terry Austin Inks, as well as a Simon Bisley page from Batman Lobo. My favorite, what if, what if six, what if the X-Men lost Inferno, Ron Lim. John Buscema from Amazing Adventures. And last but not least, Ron Wilson from The Thing 5. Hope you liked it, Kev. We finally got that John Byrne page in there somehow. So uh, thank you, Jason. And that great Art Adams page. I mean, I thought that, that was an that's an amazing page. Love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I even saw I helped uh, uh, Jason get that um, cover prelim, that Art Adams cover prelim. He'd been wanting it for a while, and it was at Berkey's in a bin for ages. And uh, well, that's what he does, right? <clears throat> I mean, I thought that was very eye opening. Mm -hmm. He said that when you guys did your show, he wasn't lying. <laughs> Yeah, that he was like, "Oh, I don't think this is aged enough." Like he said that. I mean, it's fine one. <laughs> I mean, it's it's very interesting to be on uh, like our side of it mm -hmm. um, to be able to see that. Like he's like, "Oh, it's almost like a fine wine. This hasn't aged long enough." And because right, uh, he doesn't need to sell it, he's got so much other art to sell, and so. You just can sit on it until it's the right time. That's an, the right moment. It's an interesting way to, to view art, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Different. I don't know what I think about it. <laughs> I don't know. I, hey, if I, I wouldn't mind being in that boat at the end of the day where I have so much art that uh, I can just wait till the right opportunity, right? Because maybe, maybe you know, one day there's going to be that John Buscema a Dr. Doom fan that will give the world for it. And he's got any, he, and he wants to trade Mike a Ramita senior Spider-Man cover for 10 pages of John Buscema FF with doom on it. Yeah. And he's got them. So yeah. he could just sit on them and wait for that moment. Right. It's like, yeah. why sell these pages? They're, you know, eh, they can, I could sell them all day long for, you know, 8k a piece. Right. 
Yeah. But you know what? One day they might be worth more than that in a, <laughs> in a deal. So, yeah. No, no, it's 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 a age old question. I don't want to I don't want to make this linger any long long. No. No, you're, it's like you want to talk. But Kazra, Kazra said, "Did I get any new books?" And I got two new books today, Kazra. I got a uh, right. Show it Jack off. Kirby Collector, the first thing I got this for four dollars at my local used bookstore, and Queens of the Ring by uh, Jaime Hernandez, uh, which is wrestling drawings from Jaime Hernandez, not nineteen eighty to twenty twenty. So I don't usually read the uh, the the chat, but I, I saw that Cosgrave asked that, asked that about books. So I wanted to make sure he knew that I was out buying books today. I also bought a couple of comic books as well. But those Can would be that nice Mike Allred Wolverine on the back wall. I mean, it's so good. How good is Mike Allred? Actually, those um, those pages, the page, the page of uh, Silver Surfer and the cover from Avengers. Mm that Anthony had last night. I mean, I thought those were a bargain. Like I, I didn't, I'm surprised nobody picked them up. Cause I thought they were I, oh, freaking fantastic. If I had money. I would have definitely picked up the, the yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. But then again, I have a, I've got a nice all red, uh, silver. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I got, I got a couple now. Yeah. Maureen would kill me. She'd be like, you bought another all red, but you know what? I'm starting to, I got to get Mike back on the channel. I'm kind of missing him. You know, he, I, I, after getting to talk with him what three or four times last year, it's been a while since we've had him on camera, and I didn't get to talk to him at all at OAX. So, yeah, he's one of the best. He's one of the best one of us. Like, of us, of he's a collector. He's no different. That's the thing that I noticed from seeing every all of these interviews because he did a um, a lot of interviews after he did an interview with you. And as a matter of fact, leading up to OAX, he did a couple and was like. Bill Cox is doing this thing for OAX. So on YouTube. Nobody, nobody worked harder. After Kazra and I, nobody worked harder to promote OAX than Mike yeah. Allred. I mean, he he was everywhere. He was on Kayfabe. He was on Obscure. He was on uh, uh, the Word Balloon. Um, mm -hmm. I can't think of the guy's name. John Centris. Yeah, John Suntress, thank you. And uh, but then even Kazra came across one the other day. He's like, "Hey, look, Mike was on this show. I mean, never even heard of yeah. it. Where where it was the week before OAX, and he was talking about it. So, no, Mike Mike really wanted OAX to be very successful. And, well, uh, and I think he, that there's a that lot of effort to making sure we had a good show. Well, we have a, you know, I think that we have a a, a all of a sudden we have a bullhorn. It's challenging to all of us. Like, I mean, it's like this comic art collecting thing. I keep seeing it pop up in my YouTube feed, and I'm I'm very proud of it. I'm proud to collect the things that I collect and love comic books as I do. Um, but we also have a responsibility, like to one another, to like love one another and lift one another up. That's what Mike is doing there. I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So uh, I can definitely tell we're going to omit a few other segments out of the show tonight, but I'm not going to omit the uh, the EXP video. But I will just say, just because I was rattling off uh, artist names on the Heritage side of things, I'll be honest, The over at Heritage on the weekly one, the convention sketches were, I thought, more appealing than the published stuff. There was a, a Teixeira Ghost Rider pencil mm -hmm. sketch, which was really nice, a Dale Keown pencil sketch, a Hulk. There was a, uh, a Michael Turner Soulfire piece. I mean, and a Joe Giella Batman and a Brian Stelfreeze Mary Jane. So there you go. I've just set them. So now I can now I can move on and show the EXP video because apparently there's something really good going on at. Uh, uh, Berucci, uh, Nick Berucci. I mean, he's got Stop everything Nick Berucci. lathered up in the chat. Jason wants to see it, and Alberto wants to see it. I don't know what Nick's doing tomorrow, but uh, but I guess man. we're gonna find out. Troublemaker. He's yeah. a troublemaker. Yeah. Kazer wants to know: Are you going to Heroes, Chuck? Yeah, I'll be there. All right. I think we'll see you there. All right. Well, let's yeah. take a look at what's going on at the EXP tomorrow. I did not watch this video either. Everyone, this Friday, April 12th, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Why am I putting five when it's four? On the original art experience. Now, we're not seeing much art here yet because it's been another crazy week. Matter of fact, it's so crazy. I'm shooting this on Wednesday instead of Tuesday, and I forgot to put on a black shirt. I'm wearing 
What color is this? Like navy blue? Deep? Don't worry about it. Amy said, don't worry about it. I look as terrible as I always do. So, <laughs> this Friday, April 12th, 7 p.m. Eastern. Right now, we have this awesome red Sonia cover by Lucio Parillo. God, I love this. This is one of his earlier covers. We have Spectacular Spider-Man 250, page nine and page 10. This is where the seeds are sown about little Normie Osborne. Uh, then we have Spectacular Spider-Man 250, page 29. Great issue as well. What I'm going to do since I'm not ready you guys want to pay attention. I'm going to put this Spider-Man number seven cover back up for sale. And I'm going to do it at a blockbuster price. This is the Nick is being punished for not being ready. Then I'm going to show some new art that I got. And, you know, this may not interest anyone. This art is not for sale, but I'm just going to show it real quick. So I'm going to have, ooh, for you DC collectors, Justice League. 235, Luke McDonald, goodness. The Marvel guys are like, yeah, 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 whatever. Then we're gonna have Steel number four. Check out this incredible Don Heck greatness. Then we're going to have Wonder Woman 234. This is fantastic. And I'm increasing the volume of my voice because my phone's ringing in the other room. Then we have this Teen Titans 50, which is again, more Don Heck greatness. Maybe Jay, when he cuts this commercial, he will get out some of that sound, but don't worry about it, Jay. World's Finest 256 with Wonder Woman. Really cool page. Then a little bit of Ghost Rider. Yeah, nobody's going to be crazy about this. Ghost Rider 15, page 31. Then we'll have Ghost Rider 15 again. I can't remember what page this is. Look at these price points, though. $15? Man, what the heck's up with that? Why wasn't I buying back then? And then another Ghost Rider 15 page and check it out again, $15. Then as everybody knows, I'm a huge Don Newton fan. So Detective Comics 526, the single greatest the Batman comic of all time. And we got page 38 with Catwoman Talia. Wait, where did this come from? Hulk magazine art with the X-Men? How did I get that? Didn't see that coming. How about some bizarre adventures? Where the heck did Nick get that? That is so weird. That is so not like Nick. What about Dazzler number two page with the X-Men and the thing? Where did this come from? Is this number two? Is this number one or number two? I can't remember. Let me look. Da, 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 da. Doesn't say. Uh, oh my God, look at this. $50, $100, $250. Price kept going up. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is Jason and James and a few other people watching? I've got X-Men Annual number five art, page 25. And you would think that in and of itself, that's a lot. But look at this. X-Men number five, page 35 art. Pretty cool. By the way, nothing on this is for sale. This is just show and tell. We're gonna have some fun. So uh, I bought this little collection with a friend of mine. We split it 50-50. So uh, this Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Please tune in. It'll be a fun show. This may be the only stuff that's for sale. This will be conversational. We'll have some fun. But Amy will probably talk me into bringing some more stuff for sale. So she'll make sure I find time. So please hit that thumbs up. Share. Sharing is caring. Love you guys. Look forward to seeing you Friday. Yeah, there was no way that stuff was going to be for sale. Come on. Hey, Marie, she's like, Peacock. <laughs> Peacock. What is that? All right, I mean, come on, that bizarre, Perez, um, that Perez. Oh, the, yeah, the Bizarre Adventures page. I've always, I mean, I've got that Cockrum stuff, but uh, yeah, I've always wanted an interior page to Bizarre Adventures 27. How does, how do they get these, uh, like, hey, who wants to split this collection with me? I don't know. I wasn't included in that. I, I wasn't the other uh, half of that split. I can tell you right now. <laughs> uh, well, thanks a lot, Nick. Oh. It's it's cabal stuff, right?
I guess so. See, I'm not part of the cabal. I'm not no, I I that, but I, I can tell you, I'm not. I'm not on the inside, not at all. But uh, but neither is Nick. I would not consider Nick to be part of the. Well, cabal. he's a fan, and Nick and I talked a lot at OAX, and I, I mean, he's a a fan through and through. Um, you know, everybody has their own. Uh, people that they talk to and people that they can wheel and deal with and whatever. Um, but I, 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 you know, he knows it front and back. Like, I mean, he's a fan. Very cool. But yeah, he was flexing a little bit. <laughs> uh, well, well, he'll yeah. sell it. I mean, you know, the thing is, is Nick's a fan, but he's also, he's, he's playing both sides. Like more than than uh, than than any of us. Like or not playing. I'm sorry, I shouldn't use that language. Uh, he he knows both sides, so he's like talking to Berkey and all these guys. But also, he's like somebody that really has a a, a big heart mm -hmm. and a passion for the for the uh, for the artwork and for the for comics. I agree. I definitely agree. Congrats, Nick. Uh, yeah, that's uh, all those cool. words. Yeah, the annual cool. five pages were really nice too, yeah. and a Dazzler page was pretty freaking awesome. Uh, was it? I don't know about that. <laughs> I disagree there, but well, uh, it's, 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 by Ron Lim. No, stop. I and mean, it's not that anybody is is bad, but like I was never I in, like Dazzler or like some of like the defenders, like the side teams and everything. It was always like for me. It was always like John Byrne, like the people that like really brought it. <laughs> it doesn't mean any of it was wasn't. I understand. Me. I do. So you know what? We're not even you know as ca calf updates go. We're not going to talk about the uh, the weekend sales with the uh, dealers dealers that have right? They only had like one hundred fifty thousand in sales, and we already talked about Heritage. They had ten million in sales by themselves. And yeah, exactly. Uh, bravo. So it's a uh, yeah. But you've read that in the, uh, the the market reports that Collins put out. You know all the all the details on sale. So we're just going to oh. go. What do you? Uh oh. Oh wait! I just got a thing. It says comic book art <laughs> by Abby. Is that a play button? What is that? I think it is. Uh, it's awesome. Thank sorry, you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just I have to. You know, you got a kid. She loves that I'm on YouTube. So, yeah, you're a star tonight. Anyway, all right. Here all right. We're going to go right into the art uh, picks because, yeah, uh, it. yeah it's, it's 20 minutes to midnight. We're not going to get done at midnight, but uh, we'll do I'll our go best. fast. Yeah, we will. We definitely will. It's been a good, good time so far. So, let's see here. Chuck will be starting us off, of course. Are you pressing play? It... Yes, we're pressing play right here. On the YouTube. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. First up, and who's Kafka? Oh, yeah, actually, I think you got a couple pieces by Jimmy, but it's it's so yeah. damn hard, man. Jimmy just keeps posting great stuff all the time. It's 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 really it's it's debilitating as a uh, as a collector because I you know I follow his calf Gallery updates too, and it's just like every if it's not a piece by Amanda or something, it's it's just bombshells like this well he's he's a, a a great comic art collector appreciator and uh you know this is no exception you know a lot of times we talk like i said i got a book jaime hernandez book and we always jaime kind of like has this um very natural style and uh beto gets kind of maybe not overpowered because I think that, that uh, what's the Luba like that, that there's some, they both did amazing things in love and rockets. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I look at Jaime more because it has something that's more appealing to me. But when I saw this page, I just really thought like, look at these panel borders, look at all of the textures that are happening here and look at this work. And as a matter of fact, look at that fourth panel we were talking about trina robbins earlier and talking about what a what a uh like what she did and bringing real female forms to comic book art and to wonder woman and i mean that's it 
You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think it's it's um, it's a really interesting thing to me. I, I I always gravitate towards Jaime, but but this really stood out to me as a as an amazing piece of art. Also, the spotting of blacks. Really large breasts, which is what we all love in comic books, I guess. You know, no uh, aspersions here. And like, it's like a day at the mall or something. I don't know. It's like real people. And I think Beto did that better than anybody or does that better than anybody else. Well, this is uh, amazing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jimmy's. Uh... <sighs> Jimmy might have uh, he might hit the most art posted to calf this year the rate he's going. So uh, I just want to know what Jimmy, what do you want for that Frank Quietly Jonah Hex cover? <laughs> I, mean, I broke I broke my cherry on spending money. Mm -hmm. I will do it, but just let me know. Just, I don't think he's it needs to come right. home. It needs to come home. <laughs> That was one of his favorite. Remember when we did the interview? That was one of his oh, favorite yeah. pieces. Oh, I know. I know. I know. And uh, who, who's Calf Gallery? Oh, Julian Ross, 16 year veteran of comic card fans, Raphael Grampa Page. What do you think of Grampa? What did you think of that piece that was on Heritage? I mean, it's 6,000. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was so right inexpensive. Here, right? I yeah, I think, I think it was. Uh, I, I was, was surprisingly so. I think. Because I know that when Kiriskiro, you know, uh, does does drops, I mean, his stuff goes for crazy money, and yeah. um, and it all goes really quickly too, which is, I mean, I, which isn't surprising. Um, you know, I, I don't know. There's there, there's times I kind of watch art drops, and I and I and I'm like, I'm kind of rooting for a not non sellout, right? Yeah, I am. I mean, I I want to I want to see it not happen. And then it keeps happening, <laughs> but uh, but no, I think that this this is a really nice page. I mean, it, it has all the things I think that in a, in a grandpa page that you would want. You got the I, I love the you know the texturing uh, that he does, you know, in the, in the face here. I love the silhouettes. Uh, you know, I love the storytelling. I mean, this is it's I don't know. It, he's he's not doing Marvel work here, but I'd be happy to own this page. I I, I really like it. I love his style, and it's okay. and it's distinctly different than Patera and Quietly. But in the same, uh, you know, uh, DNA. Apparently, quietly, this is this is hearsay. This is what I hear, is that quietly, Raphael Grandpa, and Paul Pope have a, a a group chat. One of them said it on an interview somewhere at some point. Okay. And they they talk about like, um, you know, I don't know. I guess they share artwork or share point of view or whatever it is. I don't know. I think it's, um, I think any of those guys and really the interesting thing to, uh, to me about this page was what, because I always go back to Raphael Grandpa with that book that he did, um, Mesmo Delivery. And I mean, it was kind of like coming out the gate, like, you know, balls out, like just amazing. And he did amazing work. And then he did, like some Marvel stuff and some DC mm -hmm. stuff. He's doing a really good Batman thing right now with DC. But this that he did with Frank Miller, he's kind of like, you know, kind of what Andy Cooper did with Dark Knight 3, which was like, oh, I'm going to kind of do Miller and I'm going to kind of do me. Because, you know, as we've seen through all of these auctions, like tonight when we were talking about the Daredevil 190 thing, it's like, we all love Miller. We all love what he did for us. We do like mm -hmm. what he did with Daredevil. And then he was like, oh, I'm going to go do RoboCop. And then he's like, no, I'm going to come back and do Sin City. And he changed right. everything. He did. Or Ronin. Or with Dark Knight Returns. All of this stuff. And regardless of whether or not Dark Knight to whatever, um, Holy Terror matters or not because i think it all matters in an artist's life i think that that this is respect for for frank miller and i think that Raphael grandpa is an astounding artist and i think that chiaroscuro always priced him like that's kind of the thing now like it used to be like oh we want to just kind of like shed these things but now they price it 
don't know if it'll be worth something in the future or not, but they price it like as it should be for mm -hmm. any artist because yeah. Raphael Grandpa is an artist and this is a, a, a beautiful page. And this book, like this Dark Knight, I mean, I pulled this out just a second ago because like I had this, I mean, DC does it. And what they do then is they, sorry. Oh, there you go. Is they, they do a nice edition of it, right? So they're not just going to leave you like, oh, Frank Miller, we're just going to do a comic book of it. And then they're like, uh, oh, we're going to do a, a nice edition. And you've got all these great pages and all of this great art. And you're going to be able to see it again and larger in a collectible format, just like they did with Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. That's how they made this, you know? So. I, th I thought you were going to tell me that the three of them shared a uh, great, uh, you know, uncle or something like that. Or they yes. had, there's some, there was some uh, something hereditary in there. I'll start a rumor and say they all shared a bed in Spain one night. It was uh, yep. very, uh, very, I thought, I, I thought it was going it was very there. tender. It was very tender. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Frank quietly was the alpha male. That's right. Exactly. Uh, but now we're back in Palmiati's uh, calf gallery, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, this is Jimmy's, and uh, we have a uh, Kyle Baker shadow interior page. And okay, I'll I be real quick it. about this one. Mm -hmm. What about that third panel right there where he's drawing all of the different shadows? I don't even know what's going on with this page, but did he do that in white line? And then, or did he, like, how did he draw this? What was the thought? And then what did Andy Helfer say? Because really, it looks like on the background in the first panel, it looks like all of these little dots. Kyle Baker's an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. It looks like all these little white dots with this black background. And then what are these faces that are going in the second one? And then in the third one, it's like, did he just paint it all black and then uh -huh. do the white lines around it? I mean, that is astounding art. Kyle Baker is one of the greatest artists that has ever graced comic book pages. He's amazing. I can argue with you there. Yeah. I, uh, I, I love this panel, the background. I mean, he's like doing that's white out mm -hmm. and he's doing the same thing. I mean, it looks like LA background. Yeah, no, this is uh fantastic. And again, Jimmy's got a good eye. He knows good art when he sees it. Mm. So, I mean, you got to trust an artist to be picking picking good pages. I mean, I don't, he probably doesn't have too many stinkers in his in his collection, I imagine. No, and it's so different than an Alex Toth or something like. Um, I don't know what issue that one is, Josh. I, I'm sorry. Well, we can ask Jimmy. It's so different than like Alex Toth. I mean, even though it's Alex Toth or um, you know Mike Sikowski or one of these guys, like. It's, it's an understanding of comic book art in the same way, but mm -hmm. it's a completely different thing. It's a completely different thing. This is what the 80s did, the late 80s, early 90s did for us. It's uh, and, and, and on top of that, there's a graphic design element that, that Kyle Baker brought in there. It's the same as Tony Salmon's. It's, it's, a, it's a completely different thing, and he draws really well. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Now we're heading over to uh, Mickey Anamandadu's calf gallery for this uh, Garcia Lopez Superman versus Wonder Woman piece. I don't even know how to explain this. What is Wonder <laughs> Woman doing like with that? I mean, I don't even know how you uh, come up with something like this uh, as a uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Like you're in one way, like you're Superman coming at Wonder Woman and she's got the pole. And then in the next one, you're close up on Wonder Woman hitting Superman. That's one of the things that uh, Jose has been best at his entire career. And even though, like, I mean, look at her face there and the hair or whatever. It's not overly rendered or anything like what we we're talking about with the, uh, even with uh, Kyle Baker just a second ago or um, J. Scott Campbell an hour ago. Mm -hmm. It is really full of power. You know, it is one <laughs> and one. Good old Marcus. Oh, Marcus. Oh, Jason's got an early meeting tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason. 
Well, enjoy the rest of your night. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, Chase. <laughs> uh, anyway, but yeah, I, I agree. Think with you. Yeah, I think this is great. Yeah. No, yeah. Garcia Lopez, uh, he was meant to draw these uh, DC characters. I mean, but he just... did that, that background in the first panel. And in that background on the first panel, you see all the rubble. It's kind of mm -hmm. like what Perez would do. You see all the rubble in the, the, the buildings already broken down. Like Wonder Woman grabbed the thing, knocked its other building down. Everything's in rubble. Then she hits him. I mean, it's... And, there's a sailboat in the background of the second panel. So it's two panels. There's a sailboat. Right? <laughs> there's <like>, two. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, there's two panels. Look at this guy walking here. He's not even paying attention. Nope, to what's going on. Everybody like, should be running. These guys, yeah. they're, they're like hand in hand practically. I don't know what's going on here. Well, that's one of the best things. <laughs> now I'm questioning. <laughs> oh, boy. And Wonder uh, Woman doing it backwards and in heels. Yes, unbelievable. But Mickey's uh, calf gallery, uh, who would it was Adkin, Adkin Sings on this one, but uh, from 1978, yep, another winner in Mickey's wonderful calf gallery. That's awesome. Then uh, Matt Lesniewski, this is uh, from Faceless Five, page one, Doug Fluger's calf gallery. And uh, I've actually been emailing with Matt of late myself. I think I'm going to be picking up a piece of art from him. I love his style. And I, I guess you do too, or you wouldn't have picked a, picked this piece out. Oh, what's that second panel? I mean, you know, it's funny. I saw I met him for the first time a few years ago at Heroes. Yep. And then on Cartoonist Kayfabe, they all talked about him. And then my friend Doug had this panel or this page up here. And I think he is, uh, you know, it's mind blowing. You know, it's 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 um, to me, it's that second panel. It's the perspective on the city and everything that's going on here. It's um, he's a really great artist, and I, I you know, anytime I get to um, say something nice about him, I'll take the advantage uh, because I think he does some really great cross hatching. I think he does some very interesting uh, things, and you know, he's got a. Yeah. Or like any kind of like pop or op art, not pop art, but op art, like mm -hmm. the like optical illusions. And he's, uh, you know, he puts the work in, I should say. Right. I mean, look at these different wood grains. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's yeah. just, he's just having fun. He's yeah. got a very uh, vivid, interesting imagination in him. I mean, the belt that's just floating around the guy. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. uh, I don't he'll get take, it, but it all works. A lot of chances, right? Mm -hmm. He'll take a lot of chances. Like anytime he'll do like some Wolverine thing or Cyclops thing or uh, Superman thing or whatever. And you'll see it. Sometimes it's successful. Sometimes it's not. But he'll always take a chance. And uh, I think that's that's very daring for a, a, a cartoonist. So I don't know this book, but I thought yeah, me neither. a very memorable page. Well, congrats to Mr. Fluger for picking this one up. Fuck Doug Fluger. He's a, <laughs> he's a nice guy. Is he? Uh, is he is. He? I've met him a few times. Oh, uh, like, you just like his handsome chest. <laughs> kidding. Uh, I love boy. Doug. He's a Nashville guy. I'm a Nashville yeah. guy. So let's talk about this page. Raphael right. number one is the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Favorite. comic that i bought in 1986 bill wow you think i say uh you know nostalgia is good nostalgia right i'm mm -hmm. hollow shaken but uh no it's not true i'm very nostalgic especially with this book because i met kevin eastman at this time and i think that this is a great page i love the tones on it i love what a young man. I mean, this is, how old's Kevin Eastman here? Like 22. He loves Frank Miller. And he's coming, come up with this guy, this uh, Casey Jones guy that's fighting his, uh, you know, Raphael ne'er-do-well ne ninja turtle. I don't know. I love this page. I love this comic. And I love seeing it on Cat. So I had to pick it. 
Well, uh, I, I think it's a great page too. I didn't, you know, I didn't pick up the turtles uh, or when they were coming out. I don't know why. I feel feel stupid now because, uh, man, you know what I didn't know. But um, that's the thing, uh, Bill. But that's the thing. Okay, so one of the things I was talking about earlier about being a couple of years. So it was just that time for me. It was that mm -hmm. Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, some X Men stuff, whatever. But Chris and I will talk about this. And Chris, just a couple of years younger than me, is like completely into He Man or no, into Transformers or right. Nick that we both know, Nick Patera. He talks about He Man a lot, but that's like he's younger than me. Like he's like 10 years, mm -hmm. maybe somewhere around there, about eight, 10 years younger than me. And he was really into He Man because that was the thing he was watching. Or one of the things Ed Pisker would talk about was he was talking about X Men, the cartoon show. Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, that was my thing. He's about 10, he was about 10 years younger than me. And so it depends on when you come into it. it always does you right know? i mean i i mean i was buying at this time going to the comic yeah. shop i was buying elementals and uh, american yeah. flag uh, i i just because you were a little bit older yeah. like i didn't get american <laughs> flag at the time i didn't give a shit like i even knew who our chicken was and i didn't care <laughs> right yep exactly and i and i saw that that and i just thought it was more you know kid oriented and probably yeah. didn't appeal to me at all and uh little did i know yeah. you know little wow. did i know well, I don't know that it's it's more um, sophisticated than anything else at the time. But, I mean, I thought that they were having a really good time with this. It's interesting to look at the um, the artistry on the uh, the third panel there with the, the, the you know, shade. because I've had, yeah, with the duo shade. Mm -hmm. Because I've had a few of those Chaken pages and how mindful he was. And, it, like, he's just like... Like he, it doesn't even matter. Like he's like, oh no, we're just do a shading a little bit. I mean, I, I think that uh, that that that's that's an interesting, um, you know, side by side because Chaikin, what he was doing at the time, and maybe it's a couple of years earlier, was very mindful with the duo shade, and this looks very uh, haphazard, but at it's still good, you know, mm -hmm. and I loved that book. And it was interesting. It was a two color book, you know, it was just black and orange. Wow. This is uh, not too bad. Now wait a minute. So yeah. David, oh, I'm going to go check. I, I feel like I'm, I'm sure I've seen David O's name before. There's but... a lot of stuff. I see a lot of stuff selling from David O. I okay. Don't know, I don't know David, but well, I, he sells some good stuff. I've seen it. All right. Well, I put a, I, I gave it my thumbs up. So uh, then Art Adams, Punk Storm. Yeah. How do you, you know, I get it. I, this, this was on my feet a, a few, a few times at least. And, uh, you know, uh, what are you going to say? All right. We could, we could do an Art Adams show a week and, pick, and maybe we should. Pieces. You know, they started on the Discord, which I was going to say earlier that I'm going to do a uh, 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 one of the uh, comic art live things, but I'm going to let Discord decide the character that I asked for. Mm. So everybody should join the Discord. But the thing is, is everybody on the Discord made me uh, start a Art Adams channel so we have an art adams channel on the discord they all love art adams they all also love the legion of superheroes and a lot of other stuff it's it's a very interesting experience being part of the discord but they all are full of love and uh you know love comics art so anybody that's on out there and wants to join the discord you should the cap discord anyway i wanted to talk about that. I want to talk. I think this is a great drawing. I think that Art Adams, what he did with that like bottom part of Storm's hair there is very. Uh, Art Adams always talks about how much um, Walt Simonson was an influence of him, and you don't see it very often, but I see it a lot in this drawing, especially 
on the hair in the back part there. And I also thought it was interesting, her little tail there that was coming down. Like, Art Adams does not... He might be like, oh, I got to draw another punk storm. Oh, my gosh. But what does he do? <laughs> he does lightning bolt earrings. I mean, he can't help but think about it. He is a great artist, and he's one of the best artists that has ever... I mean, it's funny... I wish Art Adams, I wish I got today when I was at the, at the comic store, I got um, his monkey man and O'Brien. And I wish that like, that would have like taken off like Hellboy did. And he could just do his monkey man and O'Brien fighting weirdo animals for the rest of his life. Cause that's what I'd like to see. I mean, I think it's great that I get to see more drawings of storm or whatever from Art Adams, because I think he's the, best artist, the most influential artist that has ever graced, uh, you know, in, in my life. I mean, who's more influential? Not J. Scott Campbell. No, he, J. Scott Campbell was influenced by yes. Art Adams. So was Jim Lee. So That's was, very true. And I mean, actually, who's who's more influential? Mike Golden. Like, that's it. Uh, it, all goes yeah. back, it all goes back to Mike Golden. Who influenced and, uh, Johnny comics? I don't have the link on the, to the Discord. I, I always stumble into it because I don't have it bookmarked. Chuck Arnold has to have it though. Yeah, email me chuckarnold at gmail.com or I'll, can, or I'll well, give you, it. If you have it, you can put it in the private chat and then I can share it. Because you can't put a link in the in the chat, but I I would happily put it out there uh, for anybody who'd want to. Well, anyway, Murdoch or anybody else that's on the Discord, send it out there or I'll do it in a minute. Anyway, we need to keep going. Yes, Art we do. Yes, we do. Art Adams is awesome. I'm with you. Other awesome. than Art Adams, uh, Michael Golden, biggest influence yes. in uh, modern day comic artists. That is uh, that is no lie. Like I already had my uh, like on this one. So Brian Boland, uh, or Boland, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, this is Animal Man, Animal Man number 29 cover. Jose L. Comic Art. <laughs> Is that your is that your Christian name, Jose? <laughs> we all wanted that last name, but only Jose got it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we you know the Animal Man number one cover just sold for a hundred thousand dollars in the last uh, Heritage Signature auction. I mean, this isn't a hundred thousand dollar cover, but it's it's pretty darn nice. Well, I would give a hundred thousand dollars for that uh, awesome uh, automobile that Brian Ballin drew there. <laughs> Yes, true. Oh, no, it's great. I mean, Brian Ballin's a great artist. Um, he is. Uh, he he was one of the first people who would do classic DC, but in a modern style, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd have this um, kind of what Quietly did with uh, Superman. You have this old thing, you know, like this thing. This DC thing, the thing that was like, oh, it's Kurt Swan. This is like all of those things that he would do, but he updated it. And he added all the detail and all the little lines that we all liked from Arthur Adams or whatever. I don't know. I, I, I've always thought that uh, Bolland was one of the best of the best. and So whenever I see... I don't know. Look at the look at the car. It's falling off the cliff, and the shadow on the cliff shows the shadow of the car with the open door. What's better than that? Who could put that? Who puts that amount of artistry into this without pure love? Mm -hmm. This is pure love. Nobody but Brian. And, well, great. In 1988. Okay. What do we got on here? Well, nine comments so far. Not too bad. Very nice. Jose L. Comic Art. Yeah. Congratulations, Congratulations. Mr. Comic Art. <laughs> and now you have Mr. Barucci. <laughs> Kirby and John Romita. Is that what this was? Yeah. yeah. Look at that. What I'm a right here, a colonial Captain America. How would you ever come up with it? It's right there. 
I love this book. Barry Smith inked some of the pages from this. I don't like art with swastikas on it. it I hate fucking Nazis at the same time. Really nice piece of art that Jack Kirby did with John Romita. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Nick Barucci. I'm sure he... Uh, what is this hat that the Red Skull is wearing back there? His little Pope hat with his swastika on it. <laughs> and he's got a bomb. He's got, I yeah. Mean, it's kind of dumb, right? Like, it's kind of silly. But I don't know. I, I don't... I, I think that having these sort of things... It's a very memorable yeah. image. That's the yeah. It, uh, but um, you know, uh, Nick Nick keeps getting these uh, really amazing pieces of late, and uh, this is just another one. If anybody has made a deal with the devil, it's Nick Barucci. <laughs> Maybe this was a part of that deal that he just made. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but um, but no, I mean, come on, it's 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 a it's a fantastic image, uh, even with the swastika. And uh, uh, come on, the red skull dressed up like a red coat. I mean, that's right. And the uh, buckle it's on making Cap more sense to me the more I think about it. I the like buckle it. on Captain America's thing. Also, I just love that you can go to the comics thing, like to the store, and be like, "Oh, Captain America's bicentennial battles," and it doesn't like it, it's kind of a flippant. You know, it was a couple of bucks. Like you're like, "Oh, I'm just buying this thing." And it's like, at the time, they didn't know they were getting Barry Windsor Smith inking um, and John Romita or who whoever. doesn't remember that book? Yeah. It's an, it's amazing. It's really amazing. I, I love this stuff. Yeah. Well, Nick, you keep yeah. doing it. I can't wait to see what Nick's next major uh, piece is. Hurrah, Nick Barucci. Exactly. Maybe we'll get to see uh, the next piece on the EXP tomorrow night. I think I think there'll be a few people watching. Yeah. Barry, John, and Trimpy. Uh, I, I, that book was expensive back then. It was, it was a coffee table size book. That is for sure. Yeah, uh, they, I think this is the original, but they just came out with a new version of it. Marvel just uh, reprinted it in this uh, like larger... Like they came out with this format, like what they came out with uh, Born Again, mm -hmm. and they came out with that. So, if you don't have it and you can't hunt that up, it's it's worth um, picking up because it's a it's a really interesting book. And but I prefer it with the um, the original newsprint personally. Sure, like I like that. I like seeing it printed on the newsprint as opposed to the like the shiny paper. I don't like it as much, but well, it appeals to the the younger generation that likes things on the glossy paper. We like the matte, yeah, you know, newspaper print kind of feel. I I get it. I remember. Uh, it smells amazing. good. <laughs> Would you believe a colonial Captain America? <laughs> hey, All you right, can now. Let's do it. All right, last Ooh, piece. Perez. Last piece. Oh, that's right. You had a George Perez, Pablo Marcos, Tales of the Teen Titans, Origin of Raven page. Now, who's Cap Gallery is this? And uh, Rob Hughes, a very, very great Cap Gallery, I will add. But uh, uh, that was one of the first things that I did, like when we started doing this Cap thing, because uh -huh. George was passing away. Mm. I met him. I don't know in Memphis years ago. And he did a little drawing. And it's funny, I brought the dynamite book that he did um, that was the art of. I've always loved George Perez. I know you have too as well. Mm -hmm. And like he brought it and was talking to some friends that he had at the show and was like, oh, hey, see? Like, and then he showed, he opened up, it's over there. He opened up to where he had drawn some friends of his in some thing and was like, hey, look, this is so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so -and, -so. and then he did a drawing of, of uh, Wonder Woman in there for me. And it was $25. And then, and it was for Heroes or something. Yeah, and it was a donation, yeah. Donation. Yeah. And then he posed with me for it. And then I met him a few years after at C2E2. I've always been a... Huge, huge George Perez fan. You know, it was George Perez and John John Byrne. 
The thing I liked about this page, which I didn't always love anybody else inking Perez, but Perez, I don't know how you felt about that, Bill. But to me, all of the Perez-isms in this or those pages that you guys were featuring with Fantastic Four earlier, mm -hmm. they're all there. But it doesn't have the precision to detail. So it has all of the layout, but not the thing. And this page, I think, is a beautiful page because it looks like a Perez page. Up here, Raven's mother or whatever has her, like, five head. It looks, some of the things look a little bit off. But Perez, it's like he would give 100% to every single thing he did. That's what I love about this. That's what I've always loved about Perez. And I think he was probably... You know, I, I I have no idea if he and John Byrne were in competition with one another. I kind of think that that's what, what uh, Liefeld always says on his podcast. He's like, oh, these guys were like trying to one-up one another. They were Kobe and whoever, some fucking sports thing. But like, I always think that these were just guys that they wanted to do the best work that they could do because they loved it so much. And I think that Perez loved what he was doing so much. He brought so much enthusiasm that everything I see from him, I mean, that's that's the difference. That's the difference. That's the difference in comic art collecting. I mean, I hope everybody sees that. And I hope that they can, I mean, I'm not dogging on Ron Lim or whatever you love. I think you should love what you love, but back it up because I love this. I love this. And even though I don't love these these inks on it, I love how Perez laid this out. Love everything about it. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's a great artist. He was a great artist. This is pop art. This is amazing. And it's everything that Perez ever, ever did. I mean, it's not as refined as Teen, New Teen Titans 1. Like I always think about New Teen Titans 1 and 2. Those two issues where he inked himself were the ones. But, uh, yeah, see, I've got mostly sketches. The only published piece I have now is this in humans page, but you know, yeah. by Perlin. So it's, it's got all the things you'd want. You know? Well, and right. But it's all the same. And this, yeah. and this one, if you look at it, it's Perez. <laughs> Excuse me. He's pulling himself. He's pulling from Kirby here because that's his. Like, I think hey, he did the same thing on Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until he was on Teen Titans that he does Perez. It is Art Nouveau. He does the Art Nouveau layouts. And then when he does New Teen Titans 1, he takes it up a level that you've never seen before with him. And that was the thing. But this is, I mean, it's pure Perez. You can see it. But there, like, look at Crystal. Something's off with it. It's because somebody else inked it. Yeah, no, it's the Inca that screwed it up for sure. I mean, screwed it up or okay. like just finished it. Like, that's I know, the it's thing. something odd. It's, it's it's production the work. That's the thing there. Yeah, they had know. to finish it. They had to finish it. They had to, <laughs> right. they had to get done. And exactly. they were like, what are you're you right at the last doing? panel. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what are you doing drawing all this detail in here? We just want to get this shit finished. And that's what changed it. It changed mm -hmm. comic art. George Perez. Art Adams, Michael Golden, these guys changed comic art for us. I think. So did J. Scott Campbell. You're J. Scott very Campbell evangelical in some of this stuff, man. Jim Lee. He worked for Jim Lee, and then Jim Lee changed his style to look like J. Scott Campbell. Because that's what we all do. That's what they all do. I don't know. I appreciate it and love it. Anyway, sorry. Well, you had 10 fantastic picks, Chuck. Thank you. Let's see here. Neil Adams. Yeah, he, yeah. Neil Adams, he was very influential. Yes. Very Neil influential. Adams influenced all of them, as a yeah. matter of fact. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna buzz through mine as best I can here. What do we got? Uh uh oh Daryl R. I think I featured something by Daryl R last week, but I mean Finch and Danny Mickey together. I always you know, they're just they did, did beautiful stuff. I mean you didn't need to draw all those backgrounds and things in here. You could have just focused on the characters, but uh, 
I, <laughs> and, and, he, and he put a lot of detail in the characters, but all the time in the background on this thing, this is like, this is just too much information in this page, but it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see this thing. Yeah, that's an amazing page. And look at that. I think that I always think that when David Finch <laughs> was doing this, and it's unfortunate that the comic book, the the larger corporate comic book companies were a little less interested in hyping up the artists because when mm -hmm. David Finch was doing this, he that's what he was trying to do. He was like, I am I'm ready. I'm put me in coach. I'm ready to play. Yeah. This. This is as this is as good as any Batman, any Greg Capullo, any Frank Miller, anything that's ever existed in Batman art. And look, you've even got all the detail in the background, every all the bricks, everything. Like show yeah, David Finch. You know, I, I didn't because I was, wasn't reading this stuff, but I'd look at the artwork and I'm just thinking David Finch is just going balls to the wall on this stuff. Why? You know, I mean, because at that at that time it didn't feel like really. Uh, anybody else was doing quite what he was doing here, and look at uh, Payne's hand in that, that first in that hand. first panel. Mm -hmm. Like that's like quietly. That's or John, I wouldn't even say quietly. I'll say John Buscema level anatomy at the same time doing uh, Todd McFarlane level like noodling. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Amazing. I agree. So, congrats, Daryl. Another uh, well, Daryl. Daryl. He likes Punisher. He likes Batman. He he's, he's got a diverse taste. Uh, then this is in Khalil's calf gallery. Mm. Um, I'm a sucker for anything by Paulo Rivera, and mm. uh, this is with his father too. Um, if, you know, yeah, I looked at this one. I thought that that was great. Like, what is Daredevil doing down there? But that's. Yep, it's Daredevil up there. It's to see him down in like a like in a different like not a city, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I just remember I used to own a page from this uh, this Mole Man storyline, and I totally regret selling it because I I don't know there was some some of my favorite work by Paulo, and I love his painting too. But uh, just this this work just really. I mean, I think Paulo really wanted to work on Daredevil. You yeah. know, it was a character he really, really liked. And uh, he did such an interesting thing on it. I mean, he was the first guy like to do the contour mm. Mm -hmm, thing. Yep. I thought it was cool. <laughs> Looking for his precious. Yeah, I guess he does have kind of a golem kind of feel to him there, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know, I I don't know. I I would there's there's been a few other pages that have come out uh, on the market every once in a while from this run. Uh, and I, I haven't found one as good as the one I let go. And I'm, I haven't, so I haven't bought another one yet, but I want to buy one so bad because the page I let go of was just so good. I mean, it was just, it was incredible. Sonar, well, one of the things, one of the things, creature's mouth, and it was all sonar stuff. Unbelievable page. Norik and I have been talking about it lately that we kind of have to like, it's it's very challenging because we'll see something and we'll be like, all right, this is a thing, like we could buy this now, but is this the one that we want? Mm -hmm. So you gotta wait for the one. It's hard. Right, and there's his pencils too, because he, yeah. you know, when he worked with his dad, you know, he would uh, he would do everything and then send his dad the scans. His, his dad would uh, would ink a blue line. And then, uh, since they both were ripped by Mark, you'd, you'd get both pieces. But look at that. Ah, God, I'm, so, I'm regretting. Every time I see stuff like this, ah, it's just gorgeous. It's almost like Bernie Wrightson to me there. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, congrats, Khalil. That yeah. one, uh, that's a keeper right there. And then this one, I mean, I want to go into the, it's a Frazetta love I'm story. too late for yeah. love. Like love. I'll never <laughs> love again. But. You have to, if, if you go to find this page, all right, you have to read this very, 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 very long description that Sean Clark wrote here because it's all about how it ended up having this signature on it. And uh, 
I mean, cause this is a, this is a great page. Like the big right. signature? Or yeah, the, the big blue signature, uh, you know, right through the woman's face and everything. Is that Frazetta's signature up there? No, it's not. I mean, I can tell you whose signature is. It would give it away if, if you don't read uh, it. But he, it was basically Sean and Lee Banaka met at a bar. And while they were there, they were looking at each other's portfolios. And some, some loudmouth guy walked into the bar and everybody just wanted you know a piece of this guy like they wanted him to sign stuff he's signing napkins he's signing all this shit and uh and you know and, and but he they, neither lee nor he or nor sean knew who this guy was you know they're just like god everybody loves this guy you know and they won't leave him go they're in new york or something like that so it's obviously a celebrity of some kind and apparently while this page was out of the portfolio this guy turns around and he's like oh you you know and he's drinking he's like oh you want a signature too i'll draw you up right here Draws right over the yard. Emilio Estevez. <laughs> and, and like somebody came up to him and they're like, oh, you're so lucky to have had him sign your, that thing. And they're like, who was it? It was Billy Joel. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Billy Joel in a drunken, uh, you know, uh, rant uh, or whatever the hell he was doing. He was having a good time signing everything. He was probably signing uh, topless women's boobs and things like that. Uh I don't know. Anyway, it's all fun. It's four one. Yes, I know. Uh, it made me laugh, guys. I'm. I'm I. I didn't fall for it. I didn't fall for the. Uh, here's the thing. Did, did everybody see that uh, Cap one that was posted on April Fools? Uh, I don't yeah. know if anybody I else saw it. I was I mean, laughing. I, my, it was a I was laughing my butt off the whole time. This. I. There. We need. Well. I won't say, but we, we need to do something special every year on April 1st on CAF. Can we do that? I mean, Can we? I mean, I'm sure. I thought that, that was a good one. I think somebody posting something like that every year is good. I well, there was. was, there was thing, though. Like, that was a thing. I mean, oh, I know. That was a. Mm. Well, I love the. Uh, well, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. So what we may end up doing next, we have to do something next year. No, whoever that guy was, because somebody said he did Marvel Comics number one the year before. So somebody's yes. got to top that. Um, I would suggest because that would came up in my most comments. Uh, now, pieces, now I I'd say X um, uh, Hulk one eighty one. I would say uh, you know yeah. I don't know what are the what are the the grails figure it out. But I thought that was great. I thought the cap one was great. <laughs> Andrew is like, yeah, I know Andrew because there there was a couple things that got me on uh, on that day as well. But uh, with <laughs> uh, anyway, let's keep it moving along because it already is late. And so I is this what James? All the stuff that that Anthony had last night, it all mm -hmm. came. I knew that um, that James at some point had that aliens thing. So I'm assuming yeah. this is what I he figured did. it had to be a big yeah. Big, uh, big a, it was a big uh trade. I and James is still thing. here. So, James, James, we get to talk about your piece now. I mean, uh, hey, what, I love this. What more can you say about it? It's I'm glad much it better. It. It's much better than the Excalibur page. Uh, right. yeah. Was this one April Fool's? No, this was not Marcus. Um, but thank goodness Paul McCartney didn't sign it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but obviously, uh, you know, we, we've seen this. Anthony's had this for, for a couple thank, of years. Thank goodness R. Kelly didn't sign this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know what? I think we've actually gotten 30 mystery sketch sales already. That's pretty crazy. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. But anyway, so back to this. I mean, I obviously a Thor guy. I, I, I always thought this was an awesome cover. It was never yeah. going to be one that I could pick up from Anthony. But I got to see it. I think I think he got this at Heroes a couple of years ago. At, well, it's such an unusual Sinkevich cover, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it, it is it, Sinkevich when he a lot of times, like if you think about Jim Lee, it's somebody was uh, uh, it was one of the pages I almost picked, which was um, uh, Jim Lee did a cover of uh, What If that Zatar, not Zatari, um, the other guy. Uh, Dinesh. Dinesh. Dinesh posted a couple of weeks ago and you guys talked about, which I think is a great cover. It's the same thing. This is the same thing that Sienkiewicz was doing. He was like, oh, I'll, I, I'm going to do everything. 
He was like, I'm doing Moon Knight. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. It's before he did Electra. This is, and this is a crossover because it kind of looks like Neil Adams, but it also kind of looks like Sienkiewicz on New Mutants. I mean, James, good pickup. Yeah. No, I felt the same way. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you got this one, James. It's. I I, I didn't know when it was gonna get out, get freed, but I'm so glad it went to you. Was it? And it's a, and it's an unexpected one. This is one where you you know when it, uh, I, you know James. I always you know you associate him with his X Men collection, and uh, to see him pick up a Sinkevich Thor cover is cool. I mean, I like seeing 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 the unexpected happen. Oh, it's an amazing cover, and I love it. Yeah. Well, James has forgiven you for your Excalibur comment earlier. Yeah. Now. Excalibur is still lame, but this is this nice. <laughs> uh, Duke Fleet, uh, this is a Nick Bradshaw. Uh, I forget, I forget what it's called. Zombie Highway number one cover. I, don't, I you know, I love Nick Bradshaw stuff. I think. Uh, did you see my Nick Bradshaw, the new one that I got? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, I did. Pretty cool, huh? I I was I was gonna. I don't usually it. buy that stuff. I love that though. Yeah, I just thought this was cool because you know pencil only, and uh, you know you don't. I don't know. It's, a, God, it's fun to see. Good. It. Yeah, isn't it? it almost, I mean, that almost looks like Jason Pearson more than it looks like Art Adams. Yeah, right? you're right. In a, in a way, or it does. Homing or something. I mean, but really, he's just a great artist. I mean, he has such an amazing thought, uh, like idea of space. Mm -hmm. Like he can put everything in the space that it's in. I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, it's this could almost be like a Scooby Doo cover, but yeah. it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. At any rate, just a little different from uh, from oh, from yeah. it, right. Mm -hmm. I, love yeah, it. I, I almost picked yours, and then I was like, "All right, I'm not." You, yeah. I've got Chuck on with me. I'm not going to pick his art. So then I went with this. No, oh, you should always pick my art. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, now I know. It's only okay. I mean, oh, it looks like, like the ball, and yeah, it is. It does sort of have that same feel, I guess. Uh, it's a little different uh, scenery around it. Then, but, you know, uh, I mean, the best thing, like, I, well, I think that that Nick Bradshaw, like, I mean, he's a real. Um, he loves Arthur Adams, uh, you mm -hmm. know. It's a given, but he also brings such a sense of space and dimension to everything that he does. It almost short, gives it short shrift a little bit. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Bill. No problem. Next up, Ian Saints, Calf Gallery, Tom Rainey, Scott Hanna, and what is yeah. this? Annihilation <laughs> Conquest. I just, I, I love this first panel. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just all metallic and uh, and. This is Tom even, Rainey. Yeah, Rainey mm -hmm. with Hanna inks. I I just love I just love the detail on the page. I think it's yeah. fantastic. Well, he always Tom Rainey always does like um like a metallic thing kind of like what uh bart sears would do to me mm. like i always think about him that way i always think he really does like uh slick textures really well yep no i i, I think uh, hannah did a great job inking this piece mm -hmm. i don't i don't always like uh hannah's inks i don't know why but yeah in this one it uh it all works so ian congratulations on this one well, Ian's got a great collection. I met him at OAX, and then uh, he's a super nice guy. Then I picked this one. Uh, I, I like Doug Mankey's art, mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, you know it's it's pretty simple, you know. It's but it's there's no real mid tones in this thing at all, and then a little bit of conquest. That's a <laughs> conquest. Look at that! I I I love this image. Yeah, uh, you know, I love it for just the, the, the you know the, the the rich blacks in it, and mm -hmm. uh, I I just think it's it, it's almost too simple. It's 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 executed perfectly. Uh, I like it just the way it is. Um, yeah. So that, that's all. I mean, it, it took, this was one of the when I was going through my list. This was one of the first pieces I picked. Well, it kind of stands <laughs> out. That kind of like um, with DC art, you always kind of like. I mean, to not to simplify it, but you always kind of like you you think about that slick line, and then Magnola had mm. this very graphic look to it in the '80s that he brought to it, which is very different. And uh, they they were, I mean, Miller did a little bit of that as well, but like they kind of 
resisted it, but when you see it, but you still have the heroic aspect to it, it really works. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is in Derek's calf gallery, the professor. So congrats to, uh, to Derek, another OAX attendee. Yeah. I'm like Derek. He's a, a nice and very smart guy. Yes, indeed. Tough. Then uh, I think this is Dan Potick's calf gallery. Yeah. Yes, it is. And uh, we get a Joe Kubert Sergeant Rock cover. I mean, I don't know. Every time I see any yeah. cover, it's hard not to pick them. I, I just thought this one was great, you know, etching in, uh, you know, the dead uh, comrades' names and, you know, with his knife. And I don't know, just, you know, it, it's different than a lot of the Kubert covers that we see because so many of them are always about apprehension, you know, that mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, there's the there's Nazis in the doorway and they're they're walking towards it or it's the opposite. Uh, I just feel like like that was the kind of standard trope for what year was this? What year is this cover? Hmm. Is this uh, like a platoon? Time? Is this 88 or something or is this earlier? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, at any well, rate, interesting. I was I'm reading uh, Ed Zwick's uh, um, autobiography right now, and he's talking about uh, I'm at the point where he's talking about uh, making glory. And it makes me think about this because I mm -hmm. think about like how these men at war like and <clears throat> what that meant for like when Platoon came out and then people were talking about the Civil War and everything. And I, I always think about that with with these. I mean, I think that all of that was influential to, I mean, I, don't, I think this was an 80s cover. This looks like Sergeant Rock in the 80s. Well, what was the price on it? It was 35 oh, 60 cents. So it's got to be 80s then, right? Yeah. So like what they were doing at the time or the thing that Michael Golden um, and then were doing with the NAM and um, like, it, it's like war is hell and everything. It's it's different than the, the war wheel stuff that was, was before that. And uh, quite true. I, I just always think that Joe Kubert is, I think that this is what he, I think this was his calling, right? Like, I think this was his calling. I mean, if you, I don't, I, I should have talked to Adam Hubert at OAX more, but I think that doing this stuff, like being, um, uh, kind of like, um, like, being a correspondent for what what the people saw abraham stone all this stuff like was was his calling as much as you know drawing hawkman definitely but yeah so i i i do uh i do like this piece a lot and i like it for just the just the change in uh you know just the characterization of war because mm. you do that or there's a you know like a whether it's that, uh, you know, the people who are hiding, getting ready to, you know, jump somebody, or it's a, you know, it's a tank barreling down on somebody. I just thought the the mood and the tone of this as a cover, how somber, right? I mean, it's just not not your normal thing. But who would uh, you be on here, Bill? Because I think I would be Ice Cream Soldier. <laughs> uh, probably Four Eyes, right? I think I'll go with that. <laughs> I, I I would call you wild man, but wild man. <laughs> All right, I'll take that too. Uh, but yeah, ice cream soldier, huh? Okay. Um, so uh, let's see. Redlock gotta... Rasta. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so God Country cover by Zafino. It's almost like you. Anytime Zafino is in the week of picks, like you can almost be like, oh, we got to pick this guy. I mean, yeah. this is awesome. Right. Yeah, this is uh, in Comic Art Boston's calf gallery. It's just amazing. I mean, this is the techniques he uses in his uh, so loose you know, too, right? What's that? So loose. Oh, loose. Yeah, no, definitely. But yeah, but you go in and you look at it. I mean, look, he's he's really putting a lot of cross hatching going on in here. Uh, he's he's spraying paint. I mean, all of that. It's just crazy. You know this? Did you read this book? You know, I, I, I didn't. I, I mean, I know that I know this the story, but no, I've not read it. It's a great I comic. I have given this comic like there was a guy I used to work with, the producer I used to work with, and I was like, "Oh, you got to read this book!" Like, I, I I checked it out from the library and then went and bought it for him. It was so good. 
it is a great comic and it's kind of Thorish. It's kind of like, and it's like about dads and sons. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful comic. This is a great cover. It is reminiscent of this book. It is, um, yeah, this is great. Well, I agree. Uh, yeah, I don't read it unless I get a trade paperback in the mail for free. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, congrats to Cab on picking this one up. I mean, yeah, great book. Yeah, it, it's it's a beauty. Uh, oh, I got to get the like on that one. And I only have one more to go. And this is in uh, Mr. Michael Finn's calf gallery. And Bob Powell it's from 1954. So, I mean, my goodness, it's 70 years old. Uh, I just, you know, it's to me, it's always just cool when you see artwork that old that's out there still. And, um, I, you know, the, but I, there was something I, I like this. I, I mean, it talks about the times. I mean, what's more, you know, it's like the well, I mean, how is this not Johnny Craig? I mean, that looks like Johnny Craig artwork for me. It's, uh, yeah, well, certainly in the composition. I mean, yeah. you know, what, what you would expect from Johnny Craig, but yeah, I mean, I, I, this bottom panel's really well done. I mean, just the, the, the depth, the, I mean, I'll, I don't know. The, the lighting yeah. in it's great, but even uh, but the top panel is what sold it for me. Is it? It's like a title page. I think it's fantastic. I just mm. I love it. I want to own this thing. Yeah, you can. For I can. Low, low, low price of ninety nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, but I think Finn had a couple pieces he added this week yeah. that were really nice. But I I, I I picked this one because it was my favorite of the bunch. Yeah, the line works very nice, especially for the time. <laughs> Hear that? Uh, Marcus says it's from the OAX penthouse party scene. It yeah, next there. year, Marcus. If you were there, you could you could you might find out. Marcus has no idea. Marcus will never come to Florida. He's uh, he's afraid we'll they'll all bring out their firearms in there. Yeah, you know? nothing's as more. Well, what's the dangerous city that Marcus is always afraid of? I thought that was Portland. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Uh so anyways, I, I, I think this is great. No, I love I, it. Really like I love it too. You know, I mean, it is questionable stuff there in the second panel, but as a matter yeah, of fact, I know what you mean, always, but... you know, like that's what they're drawing. You know what I mean? Like Seattle. There you go. It was Seattle, not Portland. Seattle. <laughs> uh but I love it. I mean, this is oh, it's just so good. I yes. mean Cave yeah. girl, you'll never bother the Amazons again. This Cave girl, girl, this is your finish. <laughs> what, is it? what does it even mean? Altar and, of that, the axe. This is what I always think about. This is what, because I, I was looking again. I love looking at comics, and I'll go to comic stores on Thursdays. And I was looking today, and I'm, I'm flipping through the boxes and everything, and I'm like, I kind of remember these, and I kind of don't. So, like, mm -hmm. you'll go through your X Men comics and everything, or your Captain Americas or your Orions or Jack Kirby or whatever it is. And like, you kind of remember them, but you don't like, you know what I mean? Like, so whatever that was, right. whatever that cave girl comic was or EC comic, it's like, Oh, I just kind of experienced this. That's the best thing about comics is because you, you kind of just experience them. Uh, some things you read over and over again, some things you don't, but anyway, that is so true, Chuck. Um, man, sorry, I'm a little burned out at this point. Sorry, I, I, I think I've run out of gas. But uh, as always, it's been a lot of fun. Always, yeah. always. I love. Listen, I love being a part of this community. I thank Chris for asking me to do this tonight. I thank you for letting me do it, and um, I'm I'm very appreciative of of all of the the camaraderie that I experience when I hear like earlier uh, Jason or whoever it was, was talking about, or, or Dino talking about the thing over at Fish's house or something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I'm going to go to that thing in New York in a couple of weeks. And yeah. uh, Jason and Dan were like, Oh, Hey, I can't wait to see you. And like when we were at, we're, I'll see you guys at Heroes in a couple of months or, uh, you know, any of it. I think it's challenging because we're all isolated and we're all collectors. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I can't I can't leave without talking about Ed and what happened a couple of weeks ago. I didn't know him very well. 
but everybody knows that I've been on the station or on mm -hmm. comic art fans before and talked about comics gay babe, which was a celebration and evangelism of comics art and what comics are and what they are to all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to lift each other up and not be negative and, and, and love one another. Absolutely. And, you know, listen, I'll dog on Ron Lim or, or uh, Excalibur, but I love James and I love Alan Davis. I love Chris mm -hmm. Claremont. I love all of it. And we can do that and have healthy conversations without uh, being too negative on one another. So, Good night, Brian. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, I know, man. I know. And I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a great show in a couple weeks uh, as well. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm no, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I don't, know, of, I don't know uh, what that show's like. From it. Have you ever been to one of those? No, no, I've never been. Well, I went to a couple of comic art cons when they first started, um, you know, not, but not not this uh, New York comic art, not the one that Zadix run. But um, but I've gone to the comic art con three or four times, mm. but it's been a while. I went to the, the first ones when they came out and it was small, really small place. Let me explain all to all of you how you do it is it's the same week as my wife's birthday. And so you say, hey, can I take you to New York City for your birthday? Is that how it works? Yes. <laughs> and then you say, oh, do you want to go to a Broadway show? Let's go to a Broadway show. Let's go do all uh, this. You know, know, oh, there just so happens to be a comic art con the same weekend. Hmm. But, but you make it a two. What a guest. <laughs> it's no, the same with OAX. Right. You did it with OAX. You taught me. It was you, Dad. <laughs> you did this. Uh, uh, well, that is true. We did try to think of it in those uh, in those terms, but. Um... Listen, we are not going for four hours here, everybody. We are calling it a night. Um, but Chuck, I appreciate you, man. And I, I sincerely uh, know that you're going to have a fantastic time in a couple of weeks. You get to hang out with Jason. Dan, Potic, Dan, Dan's up at tonight. a table there, I think. Is what? Say that. Dan, I think Potic even has a table at the uh, New York Comic Art Expo. I don't think I know Potic. I was talking about Dan T, but. Oh, um, Dan T. Oh, sorry. I just figured. Yeah, no, it's all right. I don't New know Podic. Podic is he one of the. He, oh, you'll he, know him when you see yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, he's had he's him on the show before. He, You had him on the heritage thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Dan T. I didn't. Uh, I, I got the wrong Dan. Yeah. But it's because of Dan T that I'm getting uh, that uh, Lisniewski, Matt, Matt Lisniewski piece, actually. Mm. So. I owe him a little bit there, but uh, anyways, calling it a night. We appreciate you hanging out with us for a little bit longer than usual. It was a, a fun filled show. We had uh, lots of things to, to learn tonight. And, um, but I, I do want to thank everybody for picking up mystery sketches. That was very appreciative. We get to the, uh, uh, but the big thing to remember for tomorrow, exhibitor booth setup time begins tomorrow for comic art live. So we've got four weeks until comic art live. It's the uh, weekend of the 11th and 12th. So everybody should start planning for that. You'll be getting regular emails from me. And uh, yeah, any questions, anybody who hasn't set up before and doesn't know how to do it, email me. We'll take care of you. Chuck, thank you again. Everyone, have a wonderful evening. We'll see you again soon.